All righty, guys. Welcome, uh, Ricky. We got Ricky, Tony filling in for Chris today, and we Ooh. got Riff and myself, and we're here to... Let's go. Let's go. I'm just just happy we got a piece of Camel Crew here. If if anybody doesn't know, by the way, we have a main channel called Pixel Game Squad where we game hunt. There's this crew that always shows up, uninvited, by the way, called the Camel (laughs) Crew. All the time. Joe, Austin, and Tony. And Tony's Tony's filling in for Chris here today. Yeah, because Chris is where? He's running his expo. Oh, yeah. He's up in Connecticut. He's going to have a good time with that. Yeah. So oh, nice. We're going to go into our first topic, guys, and it's going to be consoles we never would collect for. Okay, Ooh. so consoles we would never collect hmm. for. I think there's a little bit of like, I think there's a lot of reasoning and why you wouldn't collect for a console, right? There's easy to be like a hater and be like, ooh, I'm a Super Nintendo guy, so Genesis sucks. But I think there's so, <laughs> which, is, which I don't think that, That's but cool. I think there's so <laughs> much to be said about library size, mm. prices. Their, their availability of buying things, the way you buy them, how you buy them. Um, I don't want to jump into it. I want to let any, 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 you're the guest. Oh, oh, oh hey, man, in the hot seat. If you sound dumb, the, the internet's forever going to think, you're going to get man, fried. Guy. All right, take me down. Take me down. <laughs> no, no, you're I good. think. I gotta say, it's the Sega Genesis. Oh, I was oh. just kidding when I said no, that. But I'm serious. Yeah, it's just that it just wasn't really a console that I grew up with. You know, a lot of my f- family members and even me growing up, we we were always playing Nintendo. So I I think I had one cousin that had a Sega Genesis, and we played Sonic like all the time on it. But other than that, I don't know. It just wasn't very nostalgic to me so now have you ever like played it in recent time where you're like oh shoot these games are good oh that's a good question i think i i can't say i actually played the sega genesis i played the game gear recently got it but not a good way to check out the yeah. sega. <laughs> <laughs> bro check out our last spot or the pre- previous podcast where we're like just game roasting. gear sucks the game gear sucks the game gear sucks that's the best part man uh no it, it's interesting when there's systems like that because there are like a lot of consoles out there where you'll be like i didn't grow up with it so i didn't enjoy it uh, I, th- I think this happened with a lot of people with the super nintendo even i think i was just recently watching an episode of the game chasers where jay was saying like he didn't grow up playing the super nintendo but it's one of those consoles when you discover at an older age you're like oh crap mm. this is a console that i would collect for yeah um ricky what, what are your thoughts I actually love the Genesis, but but here's the thing. I don't like collecting it loose. Like, if I was to collect it, I don't like collecting loose. Yeah. Genesis is a good console to collect for if you're going to do CIB. Yes. Because of the cases. They're plastic. Yeah, the plastic cases are really nice. So genius, like back in the day. So I have to know yours of what console you wouldn't collect for. Uh, Probably Atari Jaguar. Why? (laughs) I don't like the cart. I Okay, so when I collect, I think of cart, I think of box. And if I do Atari Jaguar... Then I have to collect it boxed, and that's that's gonna kill it for me. I, I just I, I don't know. I, it's like I think it's like a lot of console Atari consoles because I think the same thing with the Lynx. Yeah, I I I actually feel like I love to collect for the Lynx. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I think just the uniqueness of what it is to me is interesting. I, I I'm gonna I I know this will make people mad, but for me, hundred percent disc stuff and i could almost go like oh okay here's here's me being a hater wow i was gonna say because really okay let me let me take this back oh so you just said that so we're gonna have a fight here <laughs> i can collect like dreamcast and be happy i can collect even like ps4 ps5 xbox one stuff and be like oh cool for some reason i am such a playstation hater I, oh, I pick up PS2 games and I feel nothing in my soul. And I, I, I'm not saying I don't like PS2. I actually like the PS2. It's not my favorite console by any stretch of the imagination. But I pick it up and I don't have like any initial reaction to picking up a PS a PlayStation game. You know what it is? What? It's probably because we find it so many times. That's like the one disc we always find loose. It's always PS1, PS2. Yeah. Well, Xbox PS2 True. Really. True. for sure is the Yours worst. is 360? No, I mean, I would definitely oh, like, collect like for because I actually like played the games and stuff. So, so what's yours? Mine definitely is. It's going to be PlayStation 2. As well. I don't like PlayStation 2 games as much as people really? would think. But, I mean, on top of it, I also wouldn't collect... I'm a little collect, hurt here. Okay. I, I, also, <laughs> I also wouldn't collect anything Genesis or Sega. Like, I just wouldn't do it. Really? Like, Mass System? No <gasps> care. That's don't like, care. That's a great case. I would love yeah. to collect Mass. Nope. I did collect Master System a lot. And Genesis a lot. Yeah. I do like PlayStation 1, which I'm not a big fan of jewel case type stuff, even though Dreamcast and stuff. But I do like collecting for play, 
picking up PlayStation One stuff. But something about PS Two man, it's just dead inside. It's the case, man. Um, it's yeah. the case. It's like a DVD case. <laughs> yeah, like, true. Like, true. Dude, you pick it up, it's like, dude, I'm just picking up another Blu-ray. Like, get out of here, dude. I think I the mean, PlayStation like, not a Blu-ray, but yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I think the PlayStation Two is just so nostalgic to me. You know, I think that's like during my high school days that I played video games. That was like it. I'm 35, 34. You had 35. to think that's officially dude. how you know you're old. <laughs> I know, right? Dude, but you don't age, bro. Asians don't raisin, dude. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You do look pretty good. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I know. Like, uh, that, I, mean, I still get carded. <laughs> really? Yes. Sitting surprised. next to me and Ricky, though, it brings down your cred a little bit because Ricky and I <laughs> have been aging pretty decently. Yeah, yeah, yeah so true, true. true. <laughs> I didn't know you were 65. <laughs> <laughs> now, what would you think would be the easiest set to collect for? Okay, oh. so there's. If there's, you had all the money in the world to do it. Oh, which, by the way, I should have said PS2. The library is too huge for me. Go yeah. ahead. You mean like small wise or like, like money wise? I would say without like internet or anything like that, and you can only collect out in the wild, oh. like game stores, like what would you collect for? Oh. What's easiest to collect for for you to think just to go? I would think Wii U would be pretty easy because it's got a little small library and mm. they're oh, all dude. over still. That's what I know. I he said. doesn't like it. Never though. collect for Wii. Ever. Never. Okay, Wii. we dude. just had so much, <laughs> so much. You know, there, filler games. There's like there's 20 a lot of percent games. good games. Though. <laughs> yeah, yes. Dude, if I could oh, put all those on like a punning thing, dude, I would be ready for it. I'd be on like a field day just kicking them. Oh. <laughs> part, part, part of me wants to say like when I think about what's the easiest to collect for, my brain thinks like library size, like you said. So it's like, why don't I go Virtual Boy? That's right, true. Where it's like a small super library. Small. Yeah. But again, if like you said, throwing a, a, a chink in the chain, there's no if there's no internet, then... I technically never really see. I see the same Virtual Boy games. I don't think I'd. I think I'd actually be able to like accomplish an NES set before a Virtual Boy set That's true. if there was no internet. Because I see like Virtual Tennis and like the golf game, the Mario golf game. That's yeah. about it. It's Every true, once in true. a while, I'll see like you know something that mixes it up a little bit. But what are you <laughs> laughing about? Nothing. No, it's just that, that's just that. I, I was thinking. I was thinking tennis in my head. I was like, oh, he's gonna say Mario Tennis. Oh. <laughs> I, well, but what about like favorite though? Like what? What to you is just like? Would you keep like, ooh, like favorite without, to find? Favorite wild. to collect or favorite? How about to, this? Like, how about this? Let's 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 imagine. Yeah. Right now, I'm visualizing. Men in Black, collections are gone. Everything's gone. You're a game hunter. We're living our normal life. What are you going for? What's like your? Oh my gosh! I love game collecting. And I have nothing. Where are you going? I'm going NES. NES? Because oh, wow. there's, there's just so much. And I can always find it at the swap. That is true. It's pretty easy to find NES. And NES is one of those consoles where, yes, you see a lot of the same ones over and over. Yeah. But you still stumble in a good amount to like random weird ones where you're like, oh, I haven't seen that before. NES is one of those like what I call like wormhole consoles yeah. where like to this day I'll be editing like a retro Rick video. And I'm like, how have I never seen that game? I've been doing this for 12 years, like dedicating, in fact, a show called NES Pursuit. <laughs> I was going to say NES Pursuit. How am I finding games <laughs> that are on the NES that I'm still like, I don't remember that. There's I mean, a lot of There are about stuff. 700 plus, right? So, What is the biggest library? Do we know? Oh. Is it probably, probably we with we? All this, with all oh. we. Stuff. Library like the, of Congress. Dude, I feel, like Switch, <laughs> I feel like Switch is getting pretty big, but just because of the limited run stuff. It's getting huge. Oh yeah, because they did on like the third party open, so it's like everybody's just because they're doing everything. It. So like everything on their 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 actual store, their e store, right? It's like that's where you're talking about the flooding of the market of the well, games? well even even, yeah, physical, even physical, they're kind of dropping just dropping left and right. Really, but they're I, not bad games. I, well, I mean, maybe as, there are. Some. As far as <laughs> eShop goes, I feel like when the eShop first started, every game that came out, I was like, bang! It was good, banger, right? Yeah. Banger, and all of a sudden, it went to like. 99 cent like sketchy anime game yes where i was like tony what have your people done <laughs> i can't take credit for that one no, so tony what would you collect for i think it would be the n64 oh, i have okay. a lot I of like nostalgia that. for the n64 I love and i feel like there's still a lot of n64 out there like we can still find consoles you can still find good games out there so i think that's still in circulation still able you're able to find a lot of it interesting and i feel like it's a good size too yeah. It's mm -hmm. not too big. It's not too small. It's like that perfect, like, you feel like... Because the hard part about big collecting is, like, you feel like you've been collecting forever, and then you feel like you've gotten nowhere. Like, I know Gabo's in his NES whole thing that he is, where he's, like, trying to get the full set. And Insane. sometimes, sometimes <laughs> yeah. when I ask oh. him, though, 
he has a Gabo. Well, he did it kind of a different way. He kind of went for a lot of the bangers first, which yeah. is cool and unique. Definitely a unique spin on it. But I will say, when he tells me the number, a lot of times I'm like, "Why is it so low? Why is, is it, it so low? <laughs> like you've been. Do it feels like such a small amount because the library is so big, right? Yeah. Right. As opposed to someone on you know N64, I do not know how many games are like 300 to 400. Something. Yeah, I think there's three yeah. or 400 something. Something like that. Mm. When people start collecting immediately, they're like, oh, "I'm 140 in." It's like you're halfway there. Yeah, exactly. You know, it feels like that both NES, PS2. Just feels dauntingly, dauntingly. There's a lot going. There's on. no end. In sight. I don't know, man. I think definitely what I would pick is GameCube. GameCube, yeah. Oh yeah. GameCube just because of the that. fact that like, wow. If I'm doing a collection, I want to be able to do it with my friends, right? So like four player, most four player games is pretty much on GameCube that are like pretty much playable, right? Like I don't want to hand my friend a con N64 controller, trash controller, but great games. But <laughs> if I hand him a GameCube controller, oh dude. Smash Bros, um, Mario Kart. That started in N64, mm -hmm. both of those. Yeah, but, bro, oh, yeah. <laughs> we played those, and the graphics on those are trash. They're good. Hey, he's, he, he, he lost, so he's kind of Yeah, I'm, I'm a little salty about <laughs> it. I'm like this, I'm like salty. You know what's a fun way to find out stuff when you're buying it? Pricecharting.com oh, with sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. Curtis, wow. well, Chris Let's isn't go. here, so C Curtis has been known to kind of stutter a little bit when he goes into he's he doesn't when he's talking normal, but when he goes in like professional mode, he starts. <laughs> Curtis, tell us about pricecharting.com. Right? Read it, bro. No mess up. Right, if you mess up, go. you get smacked. All right, just a couple of things. We got uh, things that you can find on pricecharting.com. I'm gonna say they have a dashboard where you can collect video games, trading cards, comic books. One of my favorites I always like to bring up is the US coins. And you then are. another thing is I'm going to say sports cards. And those things are kind of a little bit uncommon to us in the, that type of field. But they have things that you can do. Like your people can easily track prices and previous sales. And Very nice. I'm going to tell you one right thing. You can also add your collection to the site. So uh, another thing that uh, price charting, why you keep looking at me like that, dude? Because oh I'm in shock. He's reading it so well. I know, right? You're doing great. One of the things that also like is really cool about PriceCharting.com is like the fact that like it's just so accessible. It's free to use, yeah. and like one of those things that I like to do is like when we're out at the swap. Yeah, it's just easy to type it in real quick, and you're like, wow, like this is what it's going for, and then you're not like getting kind of played over on the price. Yeah. Another thing is that. Well, they have added is like you can look up collection sets for like Jordan. That's what I was gonna say. Another big thing is Pokemon cards. That's Ooh, how, huge. How crazy yeah. is it right now in the Pokemon scene where it's just like you don't even know what cards out? Like, no. Everything that comes to like grading, yeah. everything that comes down to the fact that like, like the rarity of it. Yep. Like if you had a base set or you had an Earth fossil, and <laughs> and you did talk about subscription, which we will talk about later, later on about their subscription and service. other features that they're going to be included with another app coming out later out this month. Hey, bro, tease them, all right? Let I hold it till the next one, all right? So thank you, PriceCharting.com, thank you, and check them out, Curtis. What? Give give me one more question to follow up with our topic, oh, bro. Oh man, let me get it back into the. Ooh. Let me get it back in the go mode, guys. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> I, I like the hair, by the way. <laughs> so I mean, if you are to collect and you don't have like the preference of collecting for a certain game does it matter if it comes in the box or with the manual mm, i think it just depends on the console yes right some really hold some good regard with the boxes well i will say everything looks good with the boxes but i would think the majority of collectors when they collect aren't counting it like if i have the box it counts i think it's just if you find the game it counts but you know what uh oh you crappy playstation 2 <laughs> nobody buys just discs because nobody cares <laughs> <laughs> What are the? Why did you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm I have no rebuttal. I have no rebuttal. I have He's like, he goes to me. Mama, I'm sorry. PC Do you have a favorite suck? game that you would say that's on the PS2? Oh, yeah. On the PS2? Oh man. You know, I played a lot of horror games back in the day on okay. PS2 with my friends. Or I just shouldn't say I played it. My friends played it and I was there with them. So that's like, you know, Fatal Frame. Were you, all were you like ones. hiding behind them like, oh my God, look at this, man. These are yeah. really doing it today. I was, like, I was like, no, don't do that, By guys. the way, this good, is so scary. Good call on Fatal Frame. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Who right? on? Sorry, say that one time. You don't speak that language? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I can't understand your dialect. Have you actually. played any like the Silent Hill games and all that stuff? Yeah, Silent Hill, we recently, me and the Camel Boys met up and we plugged in Silent Hill and played it over again. Sick. It was fun. Where yeah. was the invite? Um, it, there wasn't any actually. Right on, bro. <laughs> nice. Nice. I don't think but we heard. Next time, next time, we'll we'll have to invite you guys for a game uh, yeah, night. Quit leaving us out, dude. <laughs> Just, one thing, did you say what you would want to collect for? 
oh, if I had to start over again? Yes. Yeah. So I want to say NES like Ricky, but Ricky and I, I'm going to count it as a double because we're always together. So I would say that I would go for Super Nintendo. Man, so, that's a huge library too. It, it's so yeah. interesting because I feel like the NES is like my favorite thing of all time, but I know the Super Nintendo is like what I enjoy playing more because I know the games are better. Said it before, said it again. And people hate when I say it. They call me old man. <laughs> I think peak of gaming, Super Nintendo. It was. It, ver just, it very much was. Just, just the peak of good I, games and what quality if, and no, color and it's, music <laughs> and style and commercials. It was just... <sighs> Curtis's, yeah. Curtis's, yes, no. yes, Curtis. little Zero child. Zero nostalgia for it. But I did play oh. Sunset Riders. Let's go. Oh, what did you like it? What did you think? Yeah. Huh? Do you like it? It's honestly not too bad. Okay, I really good. liked it. I was like, dude, when you're like running through a saloon, it's like you have to angle the gun like to shoot them. Dude, yeah, it's great. Did you play by yourself or with someone? Dude, of course, play by myself. You think I have friends? <sighs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> two players or like four players is insane. It's dude, why are you rubbing it in? He can't even get two players. <laughs> four players in. Four. You know, it goes up to 17 players. <laughs> What would you think would be the priciest set to collect for? Ooh. Man, I don't know. That'd be really hard. That's a hard one. Uh, how, how big is Dreamcast Library? I know. What? Neo Geo. Oh, is Neo Geo. Really? Is but is actually, no, no, no. Because there's not, I don't think there's enough of them. But they are, that is a pricey console. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I know I was talking to Twisted, shout out to homie. Um, he told me he had to sell his entire set, but like one of those games was Metal Slug. Okay. And I guess the market value on AES is like forty to 50000 just for one game. I, I'm going to guess. I'm probably completely wrong here. Might be completely wrong. I'm going to say PS1. Don't know if I'm right. <laughs> Most expensive Dude, to collect for? I just really? think they have so many of those expensive RPGs. They oh, do. That's true. Yeah, that's true. You know that's who you true. could ask? You could probably ask Dan and Alisa. But they would ne definitely have the collection on. for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 ring, ring, ring. Oh, wait, wait. Remember we did that bit? Phone Yellow. call, phone call. <laughs> wait, wait, give it to us good. You guys, but you guys do remember where that's from, Wait, right? It's Pokemon. from Pokemon. Yes. Because ring, 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 phone call, phone call. Yeah. Oh, it's joy. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's joy. They, don't they, don't put Pokemon. it into Pokemon. Just say it's you. <laughs> <laughs> don't give anyone else credit. All righty, guys. We're going to go on to a fun little one. It says, what is editing for so many YouTubers like? Okay, so this was one where, you know, Grandpa's going to tell a story. I've had so many people ask me questions, so feel free to ask me any questions. But, um... I edit for a lot of people on YouTube. I've edited for a lot of people. Um, some of the main ones that I'm like really focusing on right now is Retro Rick, Phoenix Resale, and Hustle at Home Mom, which, by the way, I've Shout out to them. hooked Ricky in. Ricky's been helping me with her channel. What Ricky will do is he'll go in there and splice up the timeline, bring in all the footage, put the comps where they go, the comparative prices on eBay and all that, and then gives me the footage for me to finish off. So how's that been treating you, by oh, the way? Nice. It's been really good. It's 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 fun. It's like a learning experience. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, it takes me like quite a while to do that. And then this dude goes around. I can see him finishing one video in like a day, and I'm just like, how? And you should see what my timelines look like. I've seen I've seen splices of your or pictures of your timeline. So like how much time would you guys say you guys take, you know, a day or a like week? Like the editing process. Yeah, the, the pull thing. process. Wait, I can't answer with them listening. <laughs> <laughs> then they're gonna know my hourly yeah, yeah, yeah. rate. Don't come on. Yeah, no, right, right, right. Okay, it's it's, my it's bad. video rate. If they want good stuff, they get it from That's you, true. Right? That's yeah. true. I love uh, that it because I remember watching a video and this guy was like, Well, let's what's your hourly? And the guy goes, Well, if I finish it in this certain yeah. amount of time and yeah. you're still getting a good product, then should I overcharge you? Right. So, so like, like, down to, like Hayden Hilliard is the guy who edited Logan Paul. He's in Mr. Beast, a bunch of other things. He's one of the best editors out there. And he said, says that it's like there is no real answer to that because it's there is no hourly rate because let's say let's take say you just started editing, right? We have the same hourly rate, but it's all about quality of what you're getting, how Correct. you're getting it. Because there's certain techniques with an editing too that they're just not part of like your mind is going to think different than mine and edit a different way than another editor might edit because that's just the way your brain thinks. You take emotions in different. You take an excitement different. So you're almost paying for the touch. for some, If you were an editor, Tony's touch, Ricky's touch. Mm -hmm. the, the Riffus touch is what it's called. It. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect touch. <laughs> Dude, it's, I'm telling you, this guy has a crazy touch no matter what. It's like out at the swap, finds things. He freaking teaches me something in like five minutes. It's like no one I know could actually do that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Because you were literally cut up things, and I'm like, dude, why aren't there YouTube videos on this? 
it, it's a weird thing. I've thought about making videos like that, but selfishly, I've thought about it a couple of times. Like, well, I don't want people to know all my tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You know, right. there's a little, it's like a magician in a way. There's certain things where like, oh, I don't want him to know exactly how I do that. But I will say I started doing it, you know, when we first started our old channel, Retro Liberty. Ricky, to this day, how did I edit the first video? You remember? <laughs> uh, how, how long did it take? No, how, what, what did I do it on? Was I set up at a nice professional <laughs> desk or? We literally sat on my, on our, on my dining table. He's like, all right, let's start it off. What should we do? And you started adding stuff to it. I was like, this is awesome. This is the best thing I've ever it was, seen. It was garbage, right. but we're like, best <laughs> editing, yes! This we did it, guys! Title. We're so excited. So this is going to be a little fun. We're going to rank them by traits for you. Right? You want, so wait, 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 like wait, wait, wait. Explain this. Wait, wait. No, no. By traits, I'm going to say who is the nicest, who is the easiest, who is the most lenient. Oh, wow. Whoa, yeah. whoa. Okay. Whoa. Is this called getting me fired out? Yeah. No, wow. <laughs> so, wait, wait, okay. Dude. First of all, shout out to all the channels. Retro Rick, I love you. Caleb, I love you. Ashley, I love you. Don't he, I didn't know you were doing this oh, like we're this. we're doing it like this. Going down this is not going to end up well. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> but I like it. I like okay. it. Put you on the spot a little so bit, but you know. So you're going to ask me about the people I edit for, and I have to like rate them? Yeah, but I mean, I, it's not like, brutal. we're not saying I can who's, answer for him. I'm not saying this, like who's right. the worst. I'm uh, saying like, you can, Caleb. Nice. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys, guys, leave Caleb alone. <laughs> he's a nice <laughs> guy. <laughs> dude, when Rick posted that awesome. community post of his editing for Caleb, I was like, dude. Oh, the Matrix is in here, dude, because it was crazy. I do. I will say I learned before before we get into that. I learned editing. I, I took it very serious. As much as I do, I, I realize at a young age, I do have a tendency for like creative things like music and, and art and drawing. That's definitely something I've always been drawn to. But I, I when I started editing, my brain immediately went on YouTube and took like every class I could take. And I was I went from like beginner video, like how to do get around in Final Cut for beginners to like the next month being like, might as well go for it. Master class, Final Cut. Like I want to know the depths of it. I want to be the best. The way I tell people if you're editing, if you see something on TV, the, the movies, a YouTube video, there will be a video out there teaching you how to do it. Yep. So it's okay to look it up and be like, dude, I want to be able to create that effect. I want to be able to tell stories that way. That's there's a whole art to effects and even just storytelling in itself. So right, I was trying you? to avoid the, the ranking, no, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tony, ask me another question. Let me, let me check the time. Oh no, it looks perfect. Yeah. Time to answer. <laughs> oh, and we gotta go. <laughs> all right. So I would say these aren't like really negative. These are all positive, but they're they you, you fit can, in the world. You can have fun with it, bro. All right. All right. So let me just start off with a good one. Who is the hardest workload out of all of them? By far and large, Caleb. Now, yeah, is that just because of the fact, like, it's just what he wants for the video? Caleb, whatever anybody says him on the internet, I will firmly, from editing for probably 50 different people and projects in my life of YouTube and commercials, Caleb is a mastermind. And people don't realize that about this guy. Like, he yeah. knows what he wants before he sees it, he thinks of the title, the thumbnail, the way, the progression, the storytelling. This is going to cut to this. I mean, he'll send me raw footage, and it's like, okay, Riff, well, we're going to start this. I'm going to go to Goodwill. I'm going to talk about two things, then cut back to me outside. I'm going to give you four B-roll shots of the store. When I go back in, I'm going to go back and say the prices of this. I'll let you know my mission after that. And I'm just like, he is on it. Now, when you first picked him up, was it like that? No, because he was just cut and dry, right? Yeah. Like any other, you know, channel, just editing and just doing his thing. And I remember he left a comment on one of my videos, the NES Pursuit days, yeah. and the comment from Phoenix Resale was, this video is better than my entire channel. And at the time he had 60, <laughs> 66,000 subscribers. And not saying I did it or it's me, but he, he will be the first to admit that I play a huge part in his growth. I mean, he went from the 60,000 to we just, I mean, it went like this when we start, when I started working with him, I don't like to say when I started editing, even though it's true, but when I started working with him, dude, I'm pretty sure it's just his mustache is just killer. It's pretty mustache good. gang That's all day. Yeah. Were you going to ask something? No, I was, I was just going to kind of mention about Caleb and I watched his secondary channel. I think it's like Renix P sale. Who names their channel? That? <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it's just very like his character on there and the things, the way he breaks down his business and what he's been doing recently it just kind of echoes what you're saying, yeah. right? It's just, he's like very much on another level the way he operates. So it's it's pretty interesting. And also, sorry, just to rewind a little bit, the reason why I asked you about what you're doing like with like hourly per week yeah, is yeah. just like you're you're very much on like go 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 all the Always. time. And so like I'm just curious, like 
man, like, where do you sleep or when do you get your rest or when do you spend time with your family, you know? And like, so I, you have, you have a lot on your plate, bro. Totally. I put things like in place that are like the for sure's that have to happen. Right. Like, you know, we recently switched churches to a church where it makes sense. Like I'm with my kids. I've been very adamant about like every other day of the week. Like, okay, I'm home for lunch. I'm taking bricks into lunch. My son, I'm taking my daughter. I'm taking my other daughter, making sure we have time. At night, make sure me and my wives put our phones down when we're together. We go on dates. That's huge for us. We must First do point. dates. But anytime I'm not specifically spending with my family, my break time is a six-mile run. And that's just what my my wife and I have come to. My break is my six-mile run. That's my breather. Otherwise, I am working. I do not pick up my phone to check things and swipe around. I don't. I just don't do it. I, I stay as productive as I can. I mean, I'll be honest. My work days, again, I'm... I'm hanging out with my family in between the time and during and making sure they're segmented to making sure I have time with them because that's most important. Mm -hmm. But from 5 a.m. to 11 at night, I am straight up working. Like, working, working. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's just how I was wired. It, it seems like it. No, it seems like it. Yeah, I don't even like... know how he, like, replies to me at the time. <laughs> he does. He, he gets back to me, like, instantly. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> he's on his next little... He's like, whoa! <laughs> Roll he's, literally, he's literally editing. He's like, look at the shirt I just got. I was like, are you, are you well, still up? <laughs> this is what I'll do. As I'm rendering a video, when it's like 30 seconds to render, I'm like, what not quick. Oh, buy a shirt. Blink. Next. Oh, video's done. And then keep going. Like, <laughs> got to squeeze in what I can. All right. We're, you got to answer on this next one. So, okay. Who is the nicest that you edit for? That is really hard. And I don't even say this. Because they're all good people. I mean, the, I'll be honest. These are probably the nicest people. I haven't met at home mom, but she seems very sweet. It, so. It's very hard to pick that because they're all, like I said, they're very good people. And I and I would tell you if they weren't. To be honest, I wouldn't work for people if they weren't. Um, Ashley is a, a genuine sweetheart. Like, she is just so sweet. She's always, like, overly, like, I want to make sure you're taken care of. We're in a group chat with, we communicate with my wife, her husband. We're in a group. We're always goofing around, playing around. Caleb is extremely I say this funny most people don't think that of Caleb because he's business he's this and this but he's very like him and Rick are always checking in about things that have nothing to do with YouTube yeah like how's your family let me pray for you Ashley's the same way too let me pray for you let me that's one of those ones where I would say across the board they're all like quality people extremely though like extremely quality people. And I wouldn't say, I, you know I'd be the first person to love to throw Rick or Caleb under the bus. Like I, I would take more pleasure in that if I could, but I can't. They're yeah. just sweet guys that genuinely care about life. And it's just, I talk to them all on a daily basis all throughout the day as just people, not like hmm. only work. You know what I mean? Right, right. Now, this is the last question for Ooh. ranking, I guess. It would be, who is the easiest slash most lenient? Rick. Rick. By far. Ashley is very much too, though. I will mm -hmm. say that. She is very much as well. I will say Rick just has it down to where he will literally film, put it all into one giant clip, send it to me, and be like, good luck. See ya. <laughs> I do his thumbnails. He barely critiques them. He almost never sends a revision of the videos. <laughs> Rick is just like, I'm too. He's like me. Yeah. Rick and I are very similar. We're always working. We're always working. And if we're not with our family, and that's about it. So he's very like, sweet, I'm, I'm trusting you, which has been great. His channel's been doing fantastic, too. Yeah. Yesterday, his video, he texted me, wow, I never thought this. His video got 100K in less than 24 hours. Holy Ooh. cow. And it was like, Rowan, one, baby. it was just one where he was like, you got this, good luck, sweet, thumbnail looks good, next, next, next. I did, in the past three days, Ricky, yeah. I finished up Ashley's video, a Caleb video, and two Retro Rick videos. Holy cow. <laughs> And, and you should see the timeline. Chugging. You should see the time. They look like the Matrix. I, I, I have crack addict brain and I've never touched a drug. So I don't know. Or don't caffeine. <laughs> or ca <laughs> I, I haven't had soda in 30 days. So. But Retro Just Rick, when we, when we met him in yeah. Arkansas, remember when I met his old editor? Yeah. He literally came up to me and he was like, you, you. And I was like, what, what's happening? He's like, how? <laughs> he's like, I've seen your timelines. He's like, you, do you genuinely do drugs? And I'm like, no. He's like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, I don't. I swear. He's like, how do you do these timelines? And I was like, I don't know. Since so. you started editing, how has the process been for you? I mean, it's it's not bad. It's just really time consuming. It's it. it I feel like once you once you put time into it, it, it I'm like getting faster at it. Mm -hmm. But that first initial like pass, couple, it's just you're just looking at it like, dang, this thing's never gonna end. But 
I mean, now it's like, I'm like, oh, snip, I need, I can do this. I, it's fun. It's fun to add your little stuff to it, too. It's, I love adding it like, hey, Riff, just to, just a heads up, I added this on here. And I start laughing. I'm like, yeah. I'm like <laughs> Ricky loves add little memes. That's like, <laughs> when, you, when you guys did that one video, you let him post on the main channel. Yeah. And it was just like meme. It was just meme, meme city. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky's first oh, video. I forgot about hilarious. that. I did that episode. Nerd. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite. Now I got a question for Tony, and I know it's not in the edit anything. Yeah. Have you ever considered on going into the content side of things, like Ooh. creative content? You guys do have a little oh. bit of. I oh, mean, growing. you guys are a camel crew. You are technically a part of the show, and like you know, your own wannabe way. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. no, yeah. never thought about that, honestly. You no, know, that's that's really funny. Um, we definitely have. Uh, oh. Joe Austin, I have definitely talked about it, um, mm. and just just because like. You know, just that that the fall, the kind of minor falling that we have, and the antagonist protagonist like thing that we have going on. It's it's really fun, I think, and uh, I think it'll be cool for us to unravel kind of like what we do on our end, and like kind of see like maybe double perspective in, in a way, and maybe we can even play off each other yeah. uh, uh, in, in some senses, you know. So, but also I think a part of me kind of worries. I don't want to put myself out there too much, Got it. you know, and because like. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it takes a special, special person, right? Very and it's special. like to be in front of the camera all the time and really be in like that main person or whatever else that is. And not to say that I want to be that, totally. right? Mm -hmm. But it's just like putting your part of your life in front of everyone is, I don't know, it, it seems very much a reach. I really like to keep my life private. Got yeah, I, I would say that's a leap of faith because the same thing with me, it was like, I didn't want to be in front of the camera at all. I would tell him like, dude, I'm just going to be in the background. Like, I'm cool. Like, I still really don't want to be in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky's 12 years deep. I'm like, sorry, bro. You, you guys are loved though. I think that's good to know. Like, you guys are loved like as the yeah, camel crew. It. I think that like even like Jared, my editor, like when, when I first started you know filming you guys and this and that he's like dude who are these guys these guys are funny <laughs> but i think it's cool because like i do like the dynamic of us on our main channel pixel game squad of like it does show a cool camaraderie of brothers because what happens the minute we film each other we all start acting like, like hey boom. what's up yeah exactly <laughs> we're immediately it's like bah, bah, like totally like the was up scene from you know like just like a bunch of goofballs <laughs> being silly and i think that's a really cool place, and I think a lot of people have warmed up to you guys real quick. You know, although poor Austin with the Harvey Weinstein thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> we, I don't know if anybody missed the episode. Uh, one of the guys on the Camel Crew, he found an old Rolodex, and there was all the big time celebrities. In there. Oh yeah, out of nowhere, Harvey Weinstein was in there. We're all like, oh, oh, oh. we were like, should we laugh? Like, is this funny? Like, in this weird world. But and in the end, of course, it's funny. Poor Austin. I called him Harvey last episode. <laughs> He's like, he's like, really? You gonna you gonna call me that? I'm like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Austin's a champ, dude. He, he, is. he yeah. Yeah, 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 well. Yeah. Okay, so another thing on this same topic is like, not is like, uh, what are some of the key traits that you look for when you are editing to be able to make it like a successful video? Because I know you have a director's mind, yeah. but you're also taking in somebody else's content while they're sending it to you. It's interesting because you'll get different types of footage. You'll get people who just they already know what they want in mind. Let's take like a Caleb. Actually, I have three examples. It's perfect. Caleb will be like the end where he's like, I know what I want, but of course use your creative mind to turn this into what you think because without that, I wouldn't have wanted to hire you. I could just hire any editor, right? So he's the most like constructed of like, this is what I want, do it, and maybe mess around with a little bit. Then there's Ashley, who's like a little bit below that. Like she knows what she wants, but she's not as just like, blah, here's footage. She's kind of in that middle spot. So with someone like that, I get to play in a little bit more, kind of find out their humor. You have to talk to the person you're editing for, find out them. Like You find the styles they like from the revisions they send you. They might not like as many memes. They may like them, which she does like them. Um, she likes that, so I get to play with that. And then on the other end is Rick, where it's just footage. and. Make this interesting. <laughs> However you do it, go for it and make it interesting. Hey, Rick's a minimalist for sure. <laughs> He's a minimalist. Yeah. But with that, you're finding ways to make... I tell people, and I told this to Gerard a while ago, by the way. <laughs> shout out Gerard. He's been trying to get me to edit for him full time for like 10 years. Oh, really? He, and Which is a big compliment, and I'm thankful for it because he's you know, a million plus channel. And Because I told him a long time ago, there's no excuse for a video not to be entertaining. I don't care what type of footage you get. And when I told him that, he's like, why don't you need to go tell my editors this? I'm not saying his editors are bad, but it's just, you know, you're trying to teach. Um, you can tell stories with anything. 
there's music, there's impact sounds, there's cues, there's there's interesting zoom ins and pull outs. And when you're pulling in, the music goes up with it and goes down. There's so many different things you can do to kind of be a what do you call it, a maestro when it comes to editing. And I think when you get someone like Rick, you know, who's just throwing you footage you should be able to make it interesting. So I'm always looking, where's the story in this? Where's the buildup? Where's the part that's exciting? We need to lead the audience to that, let them know it's coming and let them be excited when it gets there. A lot of times I think, you know, editing or channels will suffer when say the big reveal at the end is, and I got that shirt and it was worth five grand. And there's almost no build it. They keep using the same music through it. And they're like, dude, it was five grand. They're stoked on camera and it's just kind of there. Hmm. I want that music to swell up. I want to impact screen to fade to black where it's swoom, dead silence to let the audience breathe and be worried. Music comes back in. Cha-ching sound effect hits. Not the ones that everybody use, though. Go look up some new ones. This guy well, the new music dude. comes in. I'm, I'm visualizing it, too. And you got to bring them up and down. It's like a movie. Right, right, Like right. they're up, they're up, and nothing is better than they're up, they're up, they're excited. And all of a sudden, the music swoom, changes with the sound effect, and Rick looks at the camera, but the game was fake. Like there's just so many things to do to keep the audience going and moving. I mean, if you can tell how his mind works, it's kind of insane. That truly is scary. <laughs> now, this is the last question on this thing. If you had another time slot in your editing profession, yeah. who would you ideally choose for another person? Another person to edit like, for? Yeah. Man, that's a hard one. You know who I think? I pr Probably my retro life. Mm. Just Ooh, because I, I love... The, what his videos are is kind of like my favorite type of content to watch. I'm a big like emotional watcher on youtube like i weirdly enough watch like a lot of like we cry we cry we got it i definitely cry <laughs> <laughs> crying chill yeah, totally totally yeah. totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I embarrassed. but i like uh impactful content that's i love exciting content fun content that's kind of where i shine but i really find a special place in like meaningful edits where there's like more to it i, I think a big example of that and i pulled kind of my own card on caleb on this one overbearing what he asked me to do you know he ends his videos where it's like hey and i'll see if you want to see this video check it here and i'll see you guys on the flip he's done that every video and the last video he did it was at retro rick store and it was him doing this big outro about how he's proud of retro rick this and that and he sent me the and if you want to see the next video you know i'll catch you on the flip and i took that out and i just faded to a black screen and put text that said we're so proud of you rick like you've come so far and i was like you need to leave it that yeah. You need to leave it there with some soft music still going because you just got done telling your friend how proud of him you are. You ha you cannot switch it to, and I'll yeah. catch you guys. Like it just <laughs> it wasn't the time. Yeah. Right, I was right. trying to get that emotion yeah, in there the that I wanted. On that, man, yeah. dude, that is crazy. Yeah. Thank you, man. I mean, that's like a great insight on things. Thanks for asking. Yeah. So we're gonna switch it up a little right here. We're gonna go on to our next one. What is it? What is it? Agree or disagree? Oh, yes. Yes. I've been waiting all you night for this. Tony's been waiting his whole <laughs> life to play this. I haven't. I've screwed up on that thing. About three times in a row, and I hadn't screwed up on that one. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Nice. So, there you go, Ricky. You jinx yourself, bro. <laughs> because All right. I was saying agree to disagree. Or, I was like, what? Audio <laughs> listeners out there, we are holding up some signs. There is a thumbs down that's red for we don't agree. Thumbs up if we do agree, and then we'll obviously expand on the topic. Now, Tony, if you've listened before, these might be about video games, it might be on nerd culture, it might even be about something controversial. Did I say that wrong? Controversial? Disagree. <laughs> he disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like <laughs> yeah. What well, we got, Curtis? Right, we're gonna go on to our first one. Custom painted, fabricated consoles look tacky and cheap. Oh, okay. Oh. So I've seen some of some people talk about this because you see, you know, consoles are great. Then you see people who do all the custom jobs, which are great, but also some people think that it's like a little bit of a defacement Wait to a it. Wait a second. Uh -oh. Are we gonna agree or disagree? Oh. Here, guys? Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. I'm oh, gonna man. say I disagree. Ooh, totally. I agree. Totally okay, agree. Mr. Purist, we got a thumbs up, yes. a thumbs down, and Ricky. I, yes, I dis I disagree as well. So the odd man out has to explain yourself. So you think they can look tax tacky? They can look tacky. Explain. I just I just appreciate everyone's artisticness and behind it, right? And everyone's little personal touch to it. You know, whether it's like a transparent, clear, you know, N64. So you're saying whatever. you like them? I kind of like them. Oh, so you want to put a thumbs down Oh, then, oh, yeah, oh, okay, my bad. Wow. <laughs> First time oh. screwed up. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, uh, Curtis, can you schedule in a different guest next time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. One that speaks English better. <laughs> oh, no. We already had Gabo on, bro. Oh. Don't worry, bro. We couldn't have gone any more downhill from there, bro. <laughs> no, but go on, go on. Oh, I like okay, that so you were saying about transparent. I like that. Yeah, so I just, I, I just appreciate that about, you know, everyone's, 
personal touch to it. But I think on when you said purist too, I'm a little bit of a purist. Okay. Like a lot of my consoles, I just want to keep it. Yeah, as is. Ricky. Uh, I mean, after watching, have you? You know, you've seen Russ's stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like Russ's consoles. Like, but that being said, like, there's great consoles, like custom work on a ton of consoles I've seen. But there's just some janky ones I've seen. And it, it kind of had me in the yeah. middle. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to say yes or no, because I've seen some consoles that got just wrecked or they just paint it like they try to make their own theme. And I'm just like, dude, you missed it. But I'm like, I'm too. I'm not going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm there with you, Ricky. There's been some like, obviously, I love there's something special about those beautiful arts and those beautiful style. And they create, you know, a Metroid world on the console. And you're like, well, this is amazing. Yeah. But then every once in a while you get one. And you feel bad, but you don't want to say anything. Like you sit here at a convention, and like check out my custom console, and I'm like, this piece of garbage. <laughs> like, this looks so bad. Like I'm so, it's so hard to like because That's, art is art, right? And really, yeah, right, I'm sure right. there was someone who saw Picasso and was like, this is stupid. <laughs> you know. So one of my favorites, actually, I saw at SoCal Gaming Expo. Who were the Who were the new owners? Riff, Ricky, Lance, Woo! and Chris out Let's there. Let's go, it was boys. The Star Wars. Um, that was Millennium cool. Falcon Super Nintendo. Yeah, that was, that was cool. awesome. That's where I say that it, that goes above and beyond yeah. what consoles should look like. I like, think it's more of a question for the purists if like if it's like defacing. Yeah. Yeah. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say there's like like certain consoles like that I love like uh, Angry Video Game Nerds. Uh, the Nintendo. The, Nintendo. Nintoaster. Oh my gosh, I Nintoaster. love that thing. Gosh. What? Nintendo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have you yeah. seen that? Have you I seen haven't it? seen it. Bro, he's got a, a toaster, a top loading toaster, and he puts in his NES games, and that's how it plays. Yeah, it's pretty no sick. Way. I'm like, dude, I want that. Yes. I'm surprised you haven't seen AVGN very much. I, I do watch him, but not as religiously as others. Okay. You can yeah. just say you don't watch him. It's okay. I do watch him. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I would just be like, who? Like, you I'm be watch honest. Him? No, no, I do watch him. No. He's great. He's okay, great. Well, yeah, not, really there's funny. nothing against it. I just don't. It's not my content. James, if you heard that, don't worry about him. Come on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, dang yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to our next one. Nintendo has a long term nostalgia hold on people. Oh, man. Thumbs up. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. We yeah. just got a triple thumbs oh, yeah. up. Um, I guess I'll start on this one. Um, Nintendo, man, I, I don't know how they did it. Compared to every other company out there, right? There's Xbox, there's PlayStation, there's there's or whatever. There's all these companies, and Nintendo, man, their IPs were just so good. By the way, I know it's gonna be old news by the time people hear this. Charles Martinet, the voice oh, of Mario. Oh yeah, he's done. Retired. Mm -hmm. No way. He's done as the voice of Mario. Yeah. Did hear that? Thank you for all the Wahoos, my friend. That's because you <laughs> praise Chris Pratt so much, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Chris Pratt's the replacement. No. Yeah, Chris, we need li a little more Italian yeah, uh, yeah. accent, a little less. Uh, I'm sure there was part of him, though, that was like, will I get like called like a racist if I do it too much? True. That's true. not fine. You don't know anymore in the world. Like you, It's almost like if you do it, people are like, racist. But if you don't do it, people are like, come on, he's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> that so is true. hard to hear, man. It's like all of our childhood, man, it's just like. Charles Martinet, R.I.P. Pee Wee, man. It's like, dang. That was, yeah. that was recent. That was the first time in a very long time I actually was like, not that I want people to die, but I was like, dang, when I heard Paul Rubens died. Because that was a huge part of my child. Even part of the reason I think I'm so stupid and goofy. <laughs> and it was the movie, <laughs> Pee Wee's Big Adventure was 85, which is the year I was born, so. Dang. Yeah, what was the question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> on, Ricky. We're all just in like Nintendo nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Ricky, does Nintendo have a stronghold on our feelings forever towards... It's, I mean, it's... I think most of us here... Did you start off with Nintendo? I did, yeah. So it, we all started off with Nintendo, so it's like a different beast for us. It's like all, Mario. It's always going to be Contra, Metroid. It's just... Yep. Dude, whatever you start off with, it gets you so good. That's why I, all my kids, I started with the Nintendo first. It hits I'm hoping you'll oh, well. get them. Did you too. start them on the Switch or did you start them on something different? The only one I, st oh no, I started them all with Nintendo, even Mav. Yeah. So I just, like, I don't I don't know. I feel like you, have to, you should progress. Yeah. Like, go Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64. I think. Start them at Pong. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Bing, yeah, but bing. Atari with the Atari thing. Dude. Well, well I, I want to yeah, talk. Let Tony answer his first. Yeah, I I definitely agree. Uh, I mean, if you watch the latest Mario movie, I mean, 
you just see so many little Easter eggs from like so good. Super Smash, Mario Kart, and all this stuff, and they're just really building this like long term hold on us, right? And I think they also open up the door to so many different movies that they can make, and I think you guys talked about that in another podcast too. So I won't well, deep dive deep. One that Curtis was going to say that I t- Atari just announced. By the time you guys see this, it'll be like a month and a half old. But Atari <laughs> just announced they're remaking their twenty six hundred console. Oh, I saw but that. They're remaking it. As a 2600 console with HDMI. And yes, there was some good reception, some bad reception. But immediately I text the group and I'm like, do you know what would happen if the NES did that? Not an NES Classic, not an NES Mini. Re-release the NES, plays all the NES original hardware, original cartridges as HDMI. It would sell so freaking wild. It would go insane. The market would go insane in the collecting world. Yeah, it's just so interesting, and that just shows they have a stronghold. And yes. you, I think uh, what Ben said is some of the features on it is that you could play the original carts from yeah. the fifty two hundred or what is it on the uh, on the or seventy eight is that eight yeah seventy eight hundred and the original you like, can play multiple. There's two. that's kind of like insane hardware. That's like kind of thing like what analog was doing. That's what yeah. Ben loves. So. But I almost would say if Nintendo did it, I wouldn't want one that plays the NES and Super Nintendo. No, I just want separate. You just want a separate one. NES, give me an NES, give me an SNES. Um, N sixty. I always say, bro, day, you guys dude. start releasing like Mario three original cartridge again, just as it is, straight up, nothing changed, original. Just, bro, hey, Nintendo, <laughs> people are gonna buy it up. <laughs> oh. they're, they're still, they should still go to the, for the N64 minis with all the colors. I'll buy them all. I think they'll <laughs> Take get there. Oh, money. wow. I think they'll get there. That'd be, that'd be kind of crazy, though. All right. We're going to go on to our next one. Having a healthy diet is difficult. Thumbs up. Yeah, it's difficult. Dude, what am I? Just on Very like a difficult. grease city? Like, <laughs> <Yeah. hey. laughs> I love uh, it, though. You guys all have pretty much similar So, visions. as a guy who probably has a disorder of thinking too much about like health and all that stuff, <laughs> I, th- I think about it so often what I'm eating, and I think the biggest problem with it is that the word diet, right? I think that's what makes it hard. It just has to become a lifestyle, yeah. plain and simply. Like running for me, I've said it a million times, I run six miles a day, I never miss, but it's just it's just part of my life. You know, I said earlier that that's my break is to go run. Right. It's just part of my life. Anything you do in a diet, and they always say like, it takes 20 days to get used to it. Liars. <laughs> Liars. <laughs> <laughs> I am like... 30 day, like about 30 days deep of taking my fasting even a little more extreme and not drinking soda, it's gotten nothing but harder. And I, yes. I wasn't trying to like lose weight or anything. I lost 15 pounds in the last month doing it. And I wasn't even trying to do that. I was just like, This is an extra 15 pounds yes. from the side. <laughs> <I'm> really? <laughs> but why? I'm chiseled right yeah. now. <laughs> wow. He did. Dude. He's been like on it. Like, it literally, he will not eat until. 11, yeah, yeah. So. These guys are like, Oh, we going to lunch yeah. after oh, we swap meet? I'm like, I can't go anymore, bros. No. <laughs> dude, it was yeah. like a kick in the nuts, dude. It was like, Oh, oh we lost riff time. Well, <laughs> what about you guys? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I eat so much junk food. What's your favorite food? What's your like, go to? Can I, can I stereotype? <laughs> I mean, it's not going to work out for you. I was going to say, I was gonna, I was gonna say burritos. Oh, that's what, a close one. What were you one. thinking? I was going to say fried Asian rice. food, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> like chow mein. Kidding, I, said, I said fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really love like pizza and like candy. I eat so much candy. I stress eat a lot. I don't know about you guys. I'm just like I used to. Is like, it, at is work. it just something that's just something easy for you to like get a hold of? No, I think it's just like it hits like, yeah. you know, release the serotonin. It makes you feel good, man. You know, it's like for me to like when I'm stressed out to eat a salad rather than like a, like burrito. a bag of candy or Rabbit like a burrito. What's your, ra- what's your candy? Oh, man, I love sour gummy bears. Ooh, mama mia. Mm. Yeah. What about you guys? What favorite you, favorite what's candy. Your, what's your go to? <laughs> the watermelon sour patch. Ooh, so yes. much for you guys Can having good diet. Yeah. <laughs> you like the watermelon that have like the, the tahini chili pepper on it. it. The tahini Actually, on it. Those are so good. Those are so good. Those are so good. Or the mango one. Oh, yeah, the mangoes. Oh, man. It's so good. You talking about that Tajin stuff? <laughs> oh, my gosh. What you see is that? The, the, you know what I don't like, though, that the, in what? like Mexican culture? Those little like powder cakes. They have like the rose on them. Rosa. Yeah. Bro, those are powder disgusting, cakes? bro. They're you like them. Don't say you don't, bro. I, no, I do like them, but I think I grew up with them, so that's why I like them. Even they, they're, cause I don't like, like those either. There's like a little either. pudding thing, too. Duvalin? Yeah. I tried it again. I'm like, oh, God, this is not what I remember. As far it, as know. I like with like the Mexican candies, it's the tahine stuff. Yeah. But I'm 100%. not down with any of like the, the, the others. I never like like the, the pastries they have. They always sketch me out. Which, oh, you mean like the... 
the I don't know, like, for like sure. clowns yeah. on them and stuff. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I didn't like those either. They, they use a lot of uh, marshmallows. I really the, oh, hate see, marshmallows. Like, oh, and yeah. I'm like, God, why do you guys use so much marshmallow? Gabo loves marshmallow. Really? Like, I got this Mexican candy as marshmallow. <laughs> 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 <He> loves, <laughs> like plantains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to go on to our next one. Buying a limited edition version of a game is worth the hype. Mm, I like it. This one's a good. This is one. a tough one. This is a tough one for sure. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no. Hmm. I'm gonna say yes. Tony says yes. Ricky, I'm gonna say no. Okay. Here he, here he. Explain yourself. You <laughs> say the limited edition okay, games are worth the go. hype. Let's hear it. I think because they're limited edition, and okay. because I think with all other like consumer good products, they're just so overproduced nowadays. For collectability wise, if they're really truly this limited release, it would theoretically be worth it in the long run. Got it. I like But that's that. that's my thought. I, I would say for me, like I wanted to say yes to because I do love limited stuff, right? Like I've said mm-hmm. before, if the Super Mario RPG that's coming out is limited edition, I'll pay four hundred dollars for whatever yeah. it is. But dude, I'm about to start scalping if you're paying those oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would never. It, it's just I don't know. Something about them is always worth it in the moment to me. And then once I play it, I'm like, man, I could have played this on any hardware or any, in, not any hardware, but like any, I could have just bought the game, right? Uh, oh, okay. I was thinking more game. You might be thinking like the statues or something as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm thinking like limited release, but like you're saying- run games. Well, yeah, limited run games, but you're saying limited edition, edition kind of so like- like basically yeah, the things that are- like, oh, okay. We can still convert okay, it out, okay. however. Or like okay, the steel books switch. and all that. Ricky, okay, well, got it. why'd you switch? Switch your room. Because I do love like- because I, I figured it was mainly like the limited run stuff. But if like if you're talking about like Zelda Big Box or like a yes. Mario crazy, big, like you said, Mario RPG, if they come out with it, take my money. I'm going to do it. Yeah, There's I think just, they are, aren't they? Yes. On the they Switch. I'm, I'm pumped now. I'm about to buy them all out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Dang. laughs> I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that it definitely varies between like what you like what system True. you're buying yeah. for too. Because like yeah. I, I have no care for PlayStation Five stuff, right? I feel like if it's something you're really passionate about too, then I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just like on the broad spectrum of being like I collect limited edition or limited type variant boxes isn't necessarily my thing. But again, I'll pay up if it's something like when I see certain limited boxes of things and people are like, dude, that's sick, that's worth money, or it's a great thing, and I'm like, eh. But like stupid Nintendo, hmm. the mm-hmm. limited Mario. Always. I'll pay anything. <laughs> I'll take my money. I love that voice. Stupid though. idiot. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> Dude, that is literally one of my favorite riffs. Oh. Well, you know what I picture? I always picture me as a kid. That's always what I think I sounded like to my mom. I remember no. doing Please, that mom. about Wall Street Kid on the NES, a game about like banking. I remember being I'm like, oh, mom. <laughs> it literally just sounds like you're like voice cracking like a grandma. I'll oh, get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like, yeah. All right. This one's a cool. It's going to spark a little bit more of conversation. We're going to say people should invest in themselves more. People should invest in themselves more. Yeah. I agree. I'm going to say yes, but I also want to add to, I think it's huge, like diet, exercise, well-being. But I also think there's something about investing in others that feels like a good investment for yourself as well. Hmm. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like, I, I, in the last, like, probably year, I feel like I've gotten more into that. Like, how can I help others in certain ways, and whether it's time or even financially, it, something about it to even me. Even emotionally, been, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, I, a lot of times. I've, I've, hit, I've hit the boys a couple times. Like, are we good? How is everything? Not, are we good? Like, fighting, It's not but. just you, but also Ricky's there, too, like doing yeah, the same yeah. thing. You know who's never been there for us? Tony. Yeah, dude. Dude. That's and he doesn't even invite us to the barbecue. That's such a true fact. <laughs> <laughs> such a true fact, and I don't care. I, <laughs> and I'm very sorry. Yeah. No, Anyways, I'm sorry to interrupt, dude. Back on what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, about. no, and that was it, really. I feel like, yes, of course, investing more into yourself is huge. But I'd say as long as you don't get into that borderline of selfish right yeah do you feel that sorry and i don't mean to take this off uh, like to a tangent but do you feel that do. you want to invest in other people because you've you feel that you've maybe hit this nirvana in your own life that you feel that you're just on this pace you know what i'm saying i, I do and and I, I hopefully that doesn't come off like prideful but i will say right. the last few years of my life have been like some of the best Financially, my marriage, the way I'm with my kids, the way I talk with them, my friendships, what we do, the fun we're having, I my relationship with God. I feel like everything's just like such like a 
a good place and I never want to take it for granted. And I've talked about it before that I've always been like when I'm in those places of feeling really good, I never like to let like arrogance take over to where because I know when that happens, pride comes before fall. Yep. I always feel like something's bad going to happen. Mm -hmm. So my way of like balancing is always like, well, what can I like do to help, you know, make sure that I'm not sucking this on like, yay, my life's great now sucks for you you know i right, feel like right. it's maybe like in my head like maybe some sort of like mental whether it's incorrect or correct mm -hmm. it's just kind of what where my brain goes of like how can i make sure that i'm not letting it get there and i told my wife that even when i started like making good money i admit like i'd lay in bed and be like dude i'm like anxious right now and she's like why and i'm like i don't know like something about like i don't feel like i should make that much and it's like a weird thing. What, what are you saying? Like, of course, you work your butt off. This and that. But you're, it's like something in my brain is like, I need. I don't know. I need to like make sure I'm investing in people now, whether it's financially or time or whatever it is. I don't Do you know. guys ever have that feeling like of recent, like just feeling like I should just go all in and just invest in myself? But also like obviously not tarnishing any relationships, but honestly putting yourself first instead of always just giving yourself out. I think, I think yes. You know, I think understanding like your own personal value and self-worth you know and like i think a lot of people nowadays what they do is like they put a lot of other people first you know and not mm -hmm. to say that's right or wrong but they put their well-being in the back burner mm -hmm. whether it's yeah. health or what i need to do to like be happy in life you know whether it's you know going on a run or whatever else is spending time with family i think that's what people miss a lot nowadays yeah, you know well, i mean people do get in those lulls I, mm -hmm. I could definitely i've been there too like i don't know about you ricky i don't know if you've ever been in that situation where it's like you're in a lull and then you don't know like what to get out of like you know what i mean like out of a situation or anything like that like do you have any advice because you guys are a little bit older than us yeah, so you guys yeah, so obviously have more world. experience in life yeah so like when it comes to like that kind of stuff like yeah you got, you gotta watch out for yourself but like they said like family friends but you also have to look out for like the when you're looking out for yourself, look out for like, um, how do I say it? Uh, <laughs> opportunities. Yeah. Don't miss opportunity. Like I miss so many opportunities because I just, I was like, I, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I, I got this job. I'm supporting my family. But yeah. there's a lot of things I missed out on because I didn't take opportunities. So when you're doing stuff for yourself, make sure you don't miss out on certain things. Like, yeah, you're, I'm, I was putting my family first before like, I oh, guess me, you. but I, in a way it's like, I technically did the opposite because if I would have taken that chance, it, yeah. it would have been for my family. And right. I think what Tony said too makes sense too because it's like if you don't take care of yourself and you're not a the best version of yourself, the help you're giving other people might not be the best help yep. because exactly. you're not the best you right mm -hmm. now anyway. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. course, you're always going to be looking out for others, but you got to take that balance of like, okay, I need to make sure I'm building up my, my emotions, my health, all this stuff, whatever is yeah. important to your own life so that when you are helping others – it's beneficial exactly not just useless help so i to definitely say. took this year to bet on people for me like I, I i know like in myself i was sure myself i was like i, I could definitely do this like, if i dive into myself like i'm fully confident to take on whatever comes with it but i'm definitely betting on the people around me so yeah. like being around ricky and riff i would take more sacrifices rather than i would have took back in the day like i'll put more money into what we have going on rather than what comes out of it like nothing's for profit everything is an investment so mm -hmm. time is money yep. and i i take super i'm very conscious of time with these guys you are <laughs> i'm like i'm like i do not want to take up too much of the time because mm -hmm. i know they have families and they have people to be with so it's like I value their time more than anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. It's like, you can ask people for help, but it's like, make sure you know, like when you're there for them, take into account that their time to spend with you needs to be like the focus. Like, yeah, I'm here for you yeah. and they're there for you. Like, I've said that. Meant. I've said that too with like, like family and stuff to a lot of people. That was a criticism I got when I was editing a lot and so busy is, Oh, well, you we only have an hour or two to hang out with your family a day, this and that, this and that. And I would, I like didn't know how to say it to these people. I'm like, I've seen you with your family. You're with <laughs> your family as you're scrolling through Instagram the whole time. Right, right. That's not time. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not valuable 100%. time. Yeah. I'd rather have two extremely valuable hours than six hours sitting on the couch, flipping through Netflix, flipping through their phone. To me, I'd rather, you know, make the time count. That right, you have, you right. Know? Makes sense. Dude, I could have made that its own topic, dude. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I might have to do that, dude. But anyway, we're going to go on to our next one. Collectibles or physical items that are sentimental. 
Mm. Ooh, I like this one. We can put our uh, our little papers down. You did so great on that one, Tony. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Love you guys. So, so this is a fun one. I like it. So I we we're collectors, right? We all mm. collect. You're at the Swamp Meet every week. We're at the Swamp Meet every week. We flip ever since reselling, right? Sometimes it can feel like, oh, is this stuff even important to us? You know, and I know I've talked about before. I love to collect the journey. I, that's way more important to me than the actual items. But there are those items that you have where you're like, man, this is sentimental. This is emotional. This is valuable to me. I couldn't let it go. I don't want, of course, there's always a price for something, but you know, that's just like those beholded treasures in your life. Ricky, I'm curious what yours are before I go. Oh, mine, uh, oddly enough, it's right now it's like, a, <laughs> I, I guess for me it changes, but right now for some weird reason, it's the Hasbro wrestlers. I, I'm, I'm, I literally, it brings me back to like me and my, me and my uh, neighbor playing and that's, it's, it hits home so hard because that's, the toys I had were garbage, but when I went over to his house and we watched WWF, I'm like, this is the best thing ever. I'm like, Undertaker and Bret the Hitman Hart. I'm like, yes, this is great. <laughs> so to me, like, I look at those and I'm, I just, it takes me back. I'm like, I, can't, I don't think I can let those go right now. Those look so derpy, those little They're things, so man. derpy, but they're... But they're great. But they're, they're great. great. Yeah. They what great. year did they specifically, like, come out that, like, made you feel like... Dude, it was that first, uh, first Hasbro wave. release, yeah. Ha the first wave. After that, I was just like, all right, cool. Like, I know they did made like the Rock and all that stuff, which which is cool. I, I got into the Rock in that in that era. You but. were into the Rock when I met you. You were cutting <laughs> doing the eyebrow thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Ricky, I get it. You can do the eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm like Ricky, do you want to eat uh, Del Taco or Jack in the Box? He'd be like, Jack in the Box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? smell it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Tony, the same question for you goes for you. What would you? Uh, what what's very valuable to me or what am I like holding on to? Like, sentimentally, 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 an item that you have. Oh man. I I have to say it's my first N64 Ooh. with my dad and I have the bag still. Nice. N64 bag. It's just something about like just thinking about all the times that me and my dad used to play video games. I always remember us playing uh the original N64, I mean Mario, and then the Mega Man game. Those are the two games that just stand out to me so much. So yeah, that I'm I'm holding on to that. You still have them. I still have them. Yeah, you're not gonna let them go. It's it's on display in my wow. house. Yeah, yeah. For me, I've talked about. It, I've ha I have a few different things in my childhood where it's like those are the items that were just like so important to me. Like with my brothers, it's interesting because a lot of the stuff that are super special to me about not selling, I've gotten recently, and it sounds super dumb, but it's my dad's tools. And I was like, nice. this isn't even gaming related. Mm -hmm. But my dad's been like passing me tools. And, you know, my dad's getting older. And, you know, uh, my dad watches every podcast. So does my mom. So shout out mom and dad. They watch every biggest podcast. Supporters, biggest oh, supporters. Biggest supporters. They really are. They watch. Uh, they're texting me. Oh, I saw this. You said this. But it's just my. So if you know my dad, Ricky knows. He brands his initials I know on too. everything. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. First, my dad got along better than most people I've ever met got along with anybody. <laughs> Dude, he's uh, the most interesting man in the world. He's literally the Dos Equis man that doesn't drink, but it's great. We're trying to get him on the podcast because he could tell stories for hours. But uh, he initials RJS and everything. Uh, always Robert James. Last name. It's all good. No, yeah. it's all good. Yeah, no worries. But um, just having those tools, to me, recently, I kind of set up a garage for myself, like an actual garage. And I think it was like the first time I like was in there and I was like working on stuff. And I like see the tools and I'm like, man, that's what I saw my dad doing back in the day. You know, I'd be sitting there, I'd go into the garage, he's in there working on stuff, you know, branding his tools, just being a guy. And I'm like, that is special to me. And games, there are things, of course, you know, I think some of the most important ones are like the instructional VHS tapes. Those were kind of like me and yeah. my brother's things. We'd watch all the how to beat Mega Man and how to win at Wizards and Warriors. And yeah, we would yeah. just sit and watch them, which... I know, not bragging, I know I've been said to be really good at like platformers and scribe scrollers on the Nintendo. Maybe it was really because I was watching every tip of how to do it like that <laughs> one day, you know, almost like how to's on YouTube before there was YouTube. Um, those are probably the most special to me of, you know, within games. But I think all in all, because you said collectibles. Yeah. I mean, uh, just my dad's tools. I think that's the, I could get rid of the VHS tapes if I had to, but I think the tools are the, just the one thing I just, I want my son to have it. 
I want his son to have it. I just want it to go down the lineage. That's pretty Dude, cool. That's pretty good, man. That was yeah. really good. Man, I, mine sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something about paper, but I guess Let's I might. Hear it. Let's hear it. I mean, mine is the uh, Nintendo World Championship paper yeah. that is unsigned, but it also has the quarterfinalist um, patch on it, oh, which wow. is that's super rare because it's like you don't ever see without that, and it's also unsigned. So that's one of those things that I can't let go of. I think it's just. That and what Ricky shirt, I have an official one of those and the hat. Those things are like the only three things that I Shh, think. Don't call Ricky out that has his bootleg, bro. What? Oh, I have to, dog. Come on, This dog. is real. I got it from the same website yeah. Curtis did. I didn't say it was. <laughs> I didn't say, yeah, yeah. Sheen? Did I say it was bootleg? I just said it was, I just said I, just like that one. Oh, wow. Oh, you called it out. I, yeah. yeah you no. called, it's a bootleg one. Oh, Thanks, no. Bro. I turned down Alibaba, man. It hurt. Oh, yeah. They offered you know. good money, man. I turned really? it Really? Yeah. I turned them down. I couldn't do it. it I could have. The products were so bad. So like, yeah. And yeah. I was like, dude, I am like, the, I'm not like a, you know, switch reviewer or something where I can kind of just say, like, I'm more dealing with people who are like collectors, right? And I'm like, I can't convince these people to buy this. You're movie. a man you of integrity. You know what uh, we didn't turn down? <laughs> Pricecharting.com. <laughs> Yo, that was good. Yeah, yeah that was good. I mean, was you almost good. did like a perfect setup for me, dude. I was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you're the spike. It was the spike. So what did they want us to talk about this They wanted time? us to talk about their features that involve the app, but also like what is on their website, which is the barcode. Oh, One barcode, of those things yeah. that could be very essential for us being out in swap meets is being able to scan and know what type of items we're looking for. Super essential. And one of the things that I think is great is that they also in integrated is the photo. So you take a picture of the item yep. and it'll pop up whatever the collectible you're looking for. Which is great because when you do stuff like this, you know, you can go back and forth between Google Lens and, and different sites and different this and that. But like you said, barcode scanner, image search, app, multiple things now. It's making it much more easy to just have everything right there because and it's interesting. It's so funny because price charting when they came to work with us is such like a a giant in this industry. Right? Like whenever Caleb does videos, he's always like, yeah, like I'm price charting it goes for this. When he buys out lots, he always tells them, you know, the He'll make reference sure price you pri do your price charting on it so I have everything. It's like this is the go-to and now that the app is here, it's like yeah. that I think is like the most crucial thing. Yeah, and, and the fact that they're always changing the site to be able to like go for the analytics, the sales, yep. and they're adding new features. It's just things that like we use on a daily basis. And yep. it's something that like I think that everybody else can benefit for. They can. For like I mean us for sure. If you're you watching know? this or listening to this, 100% price charting com makes sense for you. So check it out in the link in the description. Boom, slam Below. dunk. You like that with the yeah, dunk? The alley oop and the whoa. <laughs> dude, that was perfect, man. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> dude, I was so excited when you said that. I saw, I saw <laughs> his face. I was like, oh. I was like, dude, he, he <laughs> set me <laughs> up. He set me up. Perfect. <laughs> all right, one of those things. All right, so have you ever had a moment of guilt of holding on to something you had plans of letting go? Not necessarily. Well, you have no emotions. Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so say it again. Say it again. All right. So is there something that you had guilt for that you held on to, but you were had plans of letting it go? Like, you know what I mean? Like selling it or giving it to somebody, but you wanted to keep it. Oh. Ricky every day of his life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, honestly, that is me too much. Ricky's like. YouTube should start a YouTube channel called Intention of Selling. Dude, he's like Dave Chappelle when he's doing that. He's like, oh. yeah, yeah, it really is. Because, like, the crack guy. all the stuff I get, I, I just, most of the stuff I get, I really love. Like, if I buy it, I'm like, oh, I really love this. Like, um, uh, yeah, but the bad news is we get excited about everything. We do get excited yeah. about everything. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we get too excited about things. Like, oh, like, like recently, I'll, I'll have shirts that, like, I didn't really like want to like sell but i kind of i'm like oh i should not so right now it's like everything for me it's like shirts like i think virtual boy yeah i sh i'm glad i went to a friend yeah. but i was like in my head i'm like oh, i should be. like dude why why like it's smart like i should just sell it i literally doubled my money i should have i think i don't know everybody you deal with the most peer pressure of selling items you don't want to let go because not a sponsor. We do whatnot every Thursday. Uh, and at the end of every show, <laughs> we do a pull something from your room personal to oh, sell. Oh. That's like our thing. When it was at my house for like two years, I did the same thing. Like whatever. At the end of the night, I pull something I don't really want to sell. So Ricky now is in this place. And I could see it in his eyes, man. Behind it. But oh, that, just shows he yeah. that just shows he loves the people, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because you're like, I don't really know if I want to sell this. But it's like. 
for the people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can definitely put in a tough position when it's like it's something that you had for a while and it's like you've had it on display and then you're like everybody's just like you gotta get it. We we want this. We want yeah, this. Rick, you, yeah, Rick, Rick, dude, you did you did hit on the nail. That's actually more. That's more like peer pressure for me than anything. And I'm like after I sell it, I'm like. So yeah, you, you probably didn't even see these or even you on our old channel, Retro Liberty. Um, that was our thing. Like chanting Ricky, I know you guys heard us do it now, but that's like what we did. Like anytime we wanted someone to buy something, because back then we didn't have as much money, so we're like, somebody needs to buy something. So Ricky would, anything we see, Ricky, Ricky, <laughs> yeah. start chanting, just chant it. and finally Ricky would buy it and be like, why the crap did I buy this? <laughs> some, some stuff I was just like, dude, I can't believe I bought this thing. Yeah. Oh. Tony, was it? Oh, go ahead. You didn't even, you found our channel like not even long ago. If I yeah. recall, I met you at the swap meet and you saw me from Retro Rick or so. How did it work? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's a funny story. So I walked up to both of you guys. I met, I think I was watching Retro Rick first. Yeah. I stumbled on him first. And then I saw you guys on Retro Rick's uh, video. And I was actually, I asked you guys, I was like, hey, like I saw you guys on Retro Rick. And then you guys were like, we actually have our own channel. <laughs> have, Come on, man. I feel like that's always the case sometimes. Like, yeah. But now I think more frequently people are like, we watch your channel. We've been watching it for years. I had someone, yeah. I, I've had people say, I found you through Hustle at Home Mom. I've seen you through Retro Rick. I've seen you through Phoenix Reset. Like a lot of people don't know. A lot of people, a vast majority of people know me as Editor Riff and I have no idea what our main channel, Pixel Game Squad, is. So And also your older. Like yeah. older channels too. That's the G's, yeah. bro. When people Those come up to me and they're like, "What's up, Aaron?" I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> "Who are you?" They know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should reboot that. That yeah. like those like videos and stuff. Dude, I love oh. the channel name Retro Liberty. It was bro. so good. That was my favorite channel name, for sure. Right now we did it. It was more like a business thing as a different channel name, and then mm -hmm. the whole thing. It would, there was supposed to be more to it, but ended up people. I mean, people love it. Obviously, we can change it now. Poor Gabo is a tattoo of it. <laughs> Retro Liberty? No, Pixel no, Games. Oh, okay. <laughs> Although, there is a guy out there. You might even know this. There is a man out there with a NES Pursuit this big tramp stamp. I love it. Good Tattoo. man. Straight up. Shout out yeah. to that guy. <laughs> 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 Yo, I, I have a, a good habit of this. Do you keep things from the swap, like just like one item of like a lot or something that... You know, you think that you... <laughs> well, I'm just going to rewind that. I'm saying, do you keep something from the swap, right, as a reminder to like come back to those memories. There we go. Jeez Louise. Yeah, there's things that I see where I'll like leave them specifically around to like, I mean, that's really what like decorating and building a game room is, right? Like yeah. someone that is doing the video watch of this yeah. saw this Vectrex. Somebody, I don't know who it is. Sorry, audio listeners, there's a Vectrex behind us. Somebody watching this was like, oh, ah, my childhood, right? It did something for them. And it's the same thing in our room. You'll yeah. keep things strictly because most of the time, let's be honest, a lot of people have no intention of playing, but it's those visual reminders of like, yeah. man, it keeps you keeps you young. Yeah, I definitely have a bad habit because like I'll keep like sketches like here and there like at work, and then I'll also keep like like the small little pins that I never thought I'd pick. I'm like, dude, why do I have all this stuff? Yeah, and then it's like it just. I'm like, oh, wait, that was from that crazy find that I had. Well, it's hard when you're collecting small items because that, I feel like that's when it sucks, right? Even though it, it's part of it, we love it. We love paper. I mean, for goodness sakes, we'll collect badges this big. But you you almost can't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. You're like, I got this sweet thing. And then Ricky's like, hold on, let me look for it. It falls behind the dresser. And he's like, oh, that's gone for eternity. <laughs> Ricky has a special spot behind his desk where every time something falls, I'm like, it's gone forever. There's so much goods back it, huh? over there. We don't even know it's back there. I, Will Samson. Dude, I, <laughs> legit, I don't know. Yeah. It's always during whatnot, too, because we're scrambling for things. Nice. It's like, Dude, yeah. he definitely has one of those like rooms where it's like, if something falls, it's gone forever. Oh, yeah. But what do you uh, have, like, collect out of all of us? Like, I mean, we've said what we collect. What do you collect, Tony? Uh, I've been collecting a lot of t-shirts recently. Let's and go. then also... Say like, it with a your chest. <laughs> t-shirts. <Yeah. laughs> and then a lot of paperwork. I think, uh, like, the paperwork and the rarity of that type that, of stuff dude. is just like, oh, it. man, it's it. so good. Because, like, if you think about, like, the life cycle of, like, a lot of the flea market stuff, right? Yeah. A lot of these vendors, they dump it out. If they can't sell it that day, they take it to the dump. And it's gone forever, yep. right? True. And so a lot of this stuff is like super rare to come by, and that's what I really like seeing. Is that what, what did I say? Somebody like the Paper Gang or wow. what? Yeah. <laughs> the pi Paper Pixel Squad. <laughs> it's, I, I was saying the other day, I was telling Tony before I recently found. It's just so cool because this is like the stuff that doesn't exist, and I think that's what's so cool. Last weekend, I found this 
from an LA locker, of course, again, it was the guy who was like in charge of all the events for bands. And it was like all his handwritten notes with this card of him saying, hey, I just got put in charge of all of Queens displays all across California. So it's a folder of his handwritten letters and his card and him displaying pictures, actual photos are in there of him displaying a Queen launch party display for Sam Goody, then at the warehouse, then Tower Records. You, this is the stuff you cannot replace it. It does not, will not ever exist again. Exactly. And that it, it almost blows my mind when certain things like that, you know, I'll even admit on whatnot, sometimes that stuff will go. And I'm like, man, like it's crazy to think little Samson would go for more when there's thousands of those out there. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It blows my mind sometimes thinking that, which again, I'm thankful for the people who <laughs> pretty much Ryan Kinney. <laughs> hey, I mean, but also those Nickelodeon press kids and the Sig Haig stuff. I was like, Sid Haig, yep. dude, yeah. that those are some crazy. For those who missed it, man, any Sid Haig fans out there, house of a thousand corpses, devil's rejects. Dude, that's some good. I had all of his grails. I saw that. I saw I had that. all of his grails. Dude, you know, did you know Tony found Elvis photos. Like oh, he last... told me before. Oh yeah, we, we found a bunch. Did of I know? Uh huh. Dude, <laughs> yeah. that is insane, dude. So actually, I was telling Riff uh, before you guys came. Uh, Austin and I are actually working on proxying a deal with some collector. Uh, I think we have about all together about 400 photos and okay. he wants to pay about five bucks a piece. What's that equal? I'm so dumb. So about 2000. You should know you're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa, I said you should know you're smart. Okay. There it is. There <laughs> How it much is, is that? Uh, about two grand. What'd you pay? We paid 20 bucks an album. Add a couple zeros, baby. Yeah. Let's, go. Let's go. Yo, I love, I love ending on wins like that. Yeah, so that's a win. We're going to go on to our next one, ranking 90s movies. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I like this. This should be as fun as it gets, guys. We're rating 90s movies. Now, I will say, going forward when we do these, we'll do like, you know, 85 horror movies or 90s comedy because really I was like shoot we're like we're just doing 90s movies I just kind of grabbed 90s movies so there's no rhyme or reason uh Tony start us out pick a number between one and ten and I'll grab I'll grab that movie and we'll talk about it oh let's do uh seven one two three four five six oh my gosh you couldn't have started better yes Oh, is that? There we go. Oh my gosh, Tombstone. Tombstone. Oh, Oh, I mean, I'm gonna let Ricky start because he's peeing his pants right now. I love this movie, and you know what's funny though? You and your dad got like I've watched this movie before, but you and your dad got me so into this movie. Look, I even have the Doc. This is the whole reason why I do this (laughs) dumb little thing right here. Doc Holliday is the man. Stash bag. It's like the manliest man movie. (laughs) So good. This is. S here for me. I could watch this movie over and over again. Tony. It's too good. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with Ricky. It's a, this is definitely S tier, and I actually oh. have a Tombstone poster oh. at home. Yeah, it's really o- original. And I think it's an original one. Oh, how much yeah. you want for it? I'm being dead serious. He's serious. Um, because I, so what I'm doing for my dad, my dad's a huge Tombstone guy. Oh, I really? got him an original prop gun used, signed by Johnny Ringo what? Michael Bean. Then I got from Austin the Rolodex card of Michael Bean. Oh, I'll just give it to you. No, I got it for no, like five, no. ten You bucks, don't have dude. to do that. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do a trade. So yeah, we'll you, do a trade. You say yes. Uh, S, yeah. I grew up watching all these cowboy movies with my pops back in the day, so Okay, love so we it. have that in common. My dad, huge rodeo guy for a living. That's what he did. Oh, wow. Um... I think Tombstone is one of the greatest pieces of cinema ever in, in history. So good. I would say, good. dare I would put this in top. You don't like it, do you? Curtis has never seen Tombstone. Curtis has never yes, seen I have. It. I would put it in top five movies of all time, not just wow. five movies. I, I love it to no end. Every scene is iconic. There's so much storytelling in there, aside from the awesome gunfights and, you know, the, the, you know, the town drunk, by the way, in, in, in real life. He was drunk the entire time to play the role, and it like messed him up for years. Like, really, and he couldn't like get work. Method he, actor for sure. Yeah, he was hardcore. I mean, he did a fantastic job in the movie, but that's because he was actually out of his mind drunk. Wow. So I didn't know S that. plus by all means. Uh, Let's better not say what I think you're gonna say. You can ruin it if you want to. Chris. Uh, you can be real. I was gonna be. I was just gonna be honest. Just with kidding. B, just because I mean, there's probably something that hits better with nostalgia wise for me, but I mean, westerns and that type of like vibe wasn't me. Okay. So I would say B for me. I'm not you're just gonna. Like, you're more like you like watch Glee. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was gonna be like, dude, you're gonna have to hire a new producer. <laughs> hey, dad, Dad, I'm sorry. Cover your ears for Curtis's grade. Hey, no, nah, he's he's the most interesting rodeo man I've ever met. So he would have some stories. He's not on Tombstone, is he? Is he? He is. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're good. So. And, and for anyone who didn't catch it, we said ranking these, but we're quite literally physically ranking them. S is the best. 
Mm-hmm. F is the worst. We'll build a system. So I think it's high triple S A. That's like S minus. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, that's S minus. Uh, Ricky, why don't you go ahead and give me a, a number? Number three. Number three. Number three. Ooh. Ooh. You, you seen this movie? Yeah, yeah. Let's I love have it. you go for it. I would say that. Tommy this, Boy, by the way, audio listener. Tommy, Tommy Boy. Boy, yep. I would say for sure, comedy wise, for me, it's just one of those things. Um, what was it? Farley? I would say he's a, definitely an A. Chris Farley, David. Yeah, Farley. I'm a comedy guy, so yeah. for sure, I'm going to say A. Are you saying you're a joke? <laughs> no, <I'm just> yeah, <laughs> my life. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Curtis, you are loved, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say A? Yeah, I would say A. Yeah. Um, I would go, I, it's hard because I'm looking at everything else that's on this list, so th- it loses its validity if you're like, S across the board, mm-hmm. uh, right? I love it. and I, I love that sometimes we say this is a bad rating, but I'm going to go a B, even though that's a good rating. That's like a good, I think it's quite literally hilarious. I think Chris Farley, God rest that man's soul, I think he's truly one of the funniest Legend. dudes that we ever had out there, aside from you know Jim Carrey and those because His physical comedy was Outstanding, dude. I love when he when he does the running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bees. Bees, yeah. <laughs> Chris Farley's legend. B for me. B. I, I gotta say, I, I gotta put A. Yeah, Chris Farley's definitely one of my my more favorite comedians. Okay. So and, and of course Spade did fantastic as well. Yeah. yeah. No, no skipping that. Ricky, Ricky loves Tommy Boy. I love Tommy Boy. Fat guy in a little coat. Fat guy. All day, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's an A for me, dude. A. Okay. Strong A. So where did that put us? That put us. A, uh, a, a, in between a, a and a B, so literally yeah. like half. Okay, it's probably a solid. Uh, it was A, a and one B. A Don't and try B. to do minus and pluses. <laughs> Let's oh, okay. just say. A minus. I'm between. just gonna pull a movie over because I'm just gonna pull whatever over. I like it. Hook. Oh, oh man. Oh, dang. Okay, I will say Hook has become an A. As a kid, I would have said B, but as a dad now, it hits different. Mm. There's scenes in it where like the son is standing there with with Dustin Hoffman. Captain Hook and Robin, you know, Robin Williams, Peter Pan is looking, you know, who are you going to choose? And he, there's that scene where, where Dustin Hoffman, Captain Hook, like kind of like the son backs into him, almost like choosing him over the dad. And I was like, man, as a dad, that hurts. Like mm. I can imagine another man, you're there talking to your son and he's like, I choose him. Like that's like, oh, that hurts. So th- along with the fun in it, you know, thud button, everybody. I think it's it's been put to an A for me because of a new level of enjoyment. Yeah. I got to agree with you. I do like Hook a lot, and I do love Robin Williams just in general. This is the one with Rufio, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, Where so, yeah. Dies. That's why. That's <laughs> yes. what I was going to say. I was like, dude. Yeah, Emotional. so Rufio. Yeah. Favorite actor back in the day. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. That's racist. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> I know why you picked him. <laughs> just, but, yeah, I got to say A. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites with uh, Robin Williams. That was on point. For our audio <laughs> listeners, Tony is Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And this is I an automated of- message. <laughs> yeah. This is an automated message. Uh, Ricky? Ricky? You guys already said it all. It's an A. It's a nice A. Yeah, great movie. So I love good. it. I'm a big Robin Williams fan, but I'm going to say B. B? Yeah. Okay. He, bro, he just always just tugged on my emotions in every movie and yeah. comedy. Oh, yeah. So. What a great actor all around. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, uh, Robin Williams is one of those people that just unbelievable unbelievable actor i would say that's right between a b and an a then as well i'll say right there along with tommy boy Uh, i'm gonna grab oh i grabbed a horror tony you said you like horror this is blair witch project for you audio listeners what do you think of blair witch oh this is really scary i gotta say it's an a for me great yeah i think I also I actually like like Scream and those type oh, yeah. of horror movies a little bit more, but this was Slash. just like yes, yeah, more like slashers. But this was definitely creepy for me, and I had a lot of nightmares back as a kid. I have a big backstory to this one. I won't go too long, but saw in theaters with my cousin and my brother, uh, my brother Nathan. I don't know if Adam was there as well, but saw in theaters, and it's during this was like early days of internet. So you have to remember when they were marketing this thing, it was marked and marketed as real footage. Right. Exactly. Right. So it already was like, oh, is it? There was no like, let me just go on Google and find out. Or maybe mm-hmm. that was, but nobody was doing that back then. So I watched it as a this is a real found footage allowed to be shown in theaters. And I remember being scared out of my mind. Brilliant <laughs> cinematography of the fact that you're scared at what you can't see. You yes. don't know what's there. And that scares you to death. And I remember get, driving home. I remember where we lived at a place called Gospel Gulch. It was across the street from a church. And not being willing to get out of the car to walk to my house. <laughs> Couldn't do it. My brother did it. My cousin did it. Hour later, I'm finally just like, 
three, two, one. Sprinting. <laughs> it's like one in the morning. Like, that was like me and it, dude. I'd always be like oh, afraid oh, yeah. to like, leave, like go in the bathroom. I'm like, if I turn the light off, is he just going to appear? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. The, the drain, too, where his hand would just come out through the drain. I, I hate to be so, so praising of these movies that I picked, but A. Yeah. Ricky? I didn't watch it enough to, I feel okay. bad giving it a grade. Like, and don't. Yeah, I I didn't watch it. Like I I think I've seen like a total of like 20, hmm. 20 minutes of it. So I, I I can't grade. It. I feel bad. Plus, if you watch it like later in life after you know it's not real and it lose it loses its momentum. A little bit what of steam, yeah. so scary. Yeah, huh. I would just keep it out of B. Blair Witch. It, I mean, I I, don't, I was I a love big how fan. Curse just ranks things based off their title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, B like like how Mikey was. I never played the controller. F. Yeah, he, he was ranking. <laughs> no, nah, I would say B. I'm not a big horror guy. What'd you say? I think I said A. You okay. said A. Yeah, I said A. So A minus. We're, we have a lot sitting right there in that A minus. A lot of good '90s movies. Okay, let me go for one that I think is gonna mess with people a little Let's bit. Let's do it. Space Jam. Oh, oh, can I start? Oh, this you up? can start, bro. That's a D. Honestly, wow. I honestly don't care for Space Jam at all. I'm a sports movie guy, and hmm. this one sucked. Okay, I'm gonna go after you. Dang. The reason I picked it is because I think I'm gonna break some hearts as well. I don't love it as much as I thought I liked it. I saw it as a kid, and I remember enjoying it. And it wasn't one of those movies I went back to, but I went back to it recently, and it, it's still a good movie. Like I, it's, it's a great movie, dare I say. But it doesn't hit the way most of those 90s movies I, that I feel like would have hit. Hmm. I'm going to see. Retro Rick's going to be mad. This is like his thing. I was about to say this is his oh, jam. Man. This, is, <laughs> this is Space Jam. <laughs> Shoot. <Ding. laughs> but the LeBron one was better. <laughs> Oh, good. That was, yeah, that, yeah. Was actually, no. that was actually the response I wanted from all of you. Good job. <laughs> Tony, what do you got? Oh, man. I got to say this is S for me. Okay. Like, just growing up, like, I had a, I remember having a Gatorade water bottle and I put Tony's stuff in it, right? Where it yeah. says Michael's stuff. And I just Aww, would cool. always, like, you know. That's cool. So, so S for sucks, right? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> for Space Jam, you oh, idiot. that one too. Right? So, yeah, I just, I I really like Space Jam. I don't know. I really like the, the monsters and everyone else. Yeah, just... This Monster is Squad is that their name? The Monsters the Squad. Mon 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 I think it's like Monsters. Mon yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ricky, this one's an A for me. I think you had to be a Michael Jordan fan, yeah, in order to really enjoy this movie. And I don't know. See, I know Aaron doesn't really is not really into sports. I'm Curtis an MJ is, fan, but I just didn't like the movie. Oh, I'm really? not a big Looney Tunes. Mm. But then again, I love all those like '90s like sappy sports movies that I cry in, like Rudy and Rookie, Angels of the Outfield, Angels, like, Sandlot. Those. Like you just keep going. Dude. That's true. Like, so I don't know what it was, and I was a huge Looney Tunes fan. That's all, folks. So <laughs> where, where does that put it? We had an S and A, two Ds, and two Ds. And two Ds. Yeah, maybe like C. Like C. Oh, oh wow, C we got our lowest right. rating. Oh wow, that's that Yikes. hurts. Okay, I'm gonna just grab one at random. Ooh, oh, brave heart. Oh, man. Son of a gun. I, I'm going to start just because uh, I want to. Uh, Mel Gibson, I've said, is probably one of my favorite actors of all time. Um, this was bounced between one and two of my favorite movies of all time for years. Really? It was Jurassic Park and Braveheart were always my in-betweens. I had number three, which might be on here. But uh, I love, 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 love Brave. I'm a huge fan of patriotism wherever you're from or live currently i love movies about people being willing to do anything for their country and love their country and their people uh i it is a beautiful movie what happens to his wife in the beginning or it's just it's emotional spoiler it's, it's manly <laughs> and it's emo in every certain way it's an s by by far curtis yeah i'm gonna say a um, one of the things is, bro, that iconic blue paint. That goes, oh, yeah. And he's riding on the horse and they're ready to go to war. And I'm like, let's go. Yeah, I'm getting pumped right now thinking about it. I'm like, let's go to war. My dad would always walk around the house and go, William Wallace. Wallace. Kill, 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 kill <laughs> My dad would walk around the house. What's the other one? Oh, uh, you don't need those legs. That's what he yeah. always said to me. My dad was uh, huge, huge into Braveheart. We love Braveheart. So, yeah. One Tony? of you guys? Tony. I gotta say C, man. Okay. I don't know. I'm not a big. I'm not. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm not a big Mel Gibson fan. Okay. Um. I think I felt that he was a better like movie director when he was doing like Apocalypto. That was great. That was a good I loved Apocalypse. Passion of the Christ. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. But <laughs> Apocalypto, <laughs> yeah. I thought was great. Great. So yeah, I, Mel Gibson as an actor, I'm kind of in the middle. But yeah, I gotta just give it a C. It's just an average movie to me. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Patriot. Oh yeah, I, actually I do love oh. Lethal Weapon. Yeah, but we're not. We're, yeah. we're doing. Oh, no, okay, okay, we're doing okay. on this movie. <laughs> we're doing on this movie. Oh, that's a solid A. Okay, that's a beautiful movie. Yep. All right. Beautiful all around. Yeah. So A S C and A. 
Speed so it's like an A. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Curtis just whispered to me, "Speed it up!" Like the audio listeners can't hear him. He's <laughs> yeah. like, "Riff, I'm whispering, speed up, a little. <laughs> Yo, hurry, hurry up, uh, dude." Uh, I think that put us at like what a B, ish. Yeah, like a yeah, B. Yeah. yeah. Okay, ready? We'll go fast. Oh, I tried. <laughs> Silence yeah. of the Lambs. Oh. Tony. Oh yeah, that's a good one. A for sure. That was just a nice cult fall, like cult classic. You know, amazing. I'll, I'll jump right behind A. This movie, I think, credited literally. Millions of people being scared to help someone load something in their car. Really? Because this was like that movie where Buffalo Bill or whatever his name is gets him and hey, can you help me load this in my car? Take the girl and drive away. And I, f- I feel like I've heard a million people talk about that too. Dude, have you seen Silence of the Lambs? So yeah, A for me. He puts the lotion on, on the, the skin. skin. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. I, I put lotion on every day of my legs, and I say that pretty much every time. <laughs> he puts the lotion on the skin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give it your rating. I'm gonna uh, be. I'm gonna give it a solid A. Okay. It, it was good. It was really good. I, I wasn't big into horror films, but this one I really enjoyed because it's like, I don't know. It, it was seemed too real when we were wa- watching back in the day. I was like, dang, this could really happen. That's why I think it holds an extra layer because it's a reality of realism. Like what I said about the truck, it wasn't like yeah. he's a monster and oh, I appear when the light turns on. It's like, dude, this could happen to you at any moment. Man, yeah. I'm just realizing that like when I went through horror movies in my head, I'm like, all the ones that I'm kind of not liking are the ones that are like too kind of true to accept. Were you, a? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was an A, yes sir. Like Good a little bit idea. like that. I'm like. Mm, okay. Ready? Happy Gilmore. Oh, so good. S. 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 Let's I go. Love, I go. love Adam Sandler, man. He's great. S, baby. S. S. Ooh, I ruined it, guys. I'm sorry. That's right. fine. I ruined Tombstone, so it's okay. You did ruin it. You did yeah, ruin yeah. That's, that's just messed up, though. Dude, my swing for golf is literally Happy Gilmore. He can literally yeah, do it, it pretty good. I saw it. it. Wow. Dude, I'm telling you right now, I absolutely crush balls because of his swing. Nice. For for Chris. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. I think this locks it in there right around Tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Next one. Ready? TMNT original. Ooh. Ooh. Which we, oh, we kind of d- got a little dicey with Mikey last time. Ricky, what's your answer? <sighs> you know what? Because of the time and what everything that like when it was around for me, it's an S. Let's Just go. because of how it came out. It was so good. It was so ahead of its time. Yeah. Like the turtles talked. I was like, oh my yeah. God, this turtles is so good. Turtles awesome. talk. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. S. And Ernie Reyes Jr. Yeah. And all the like the fighting choreography so in there good. was great. Doesn't Retro Rick own like the suit? Like one of the suits or something they used the on movie? it? Really? Yeah. For me, it, it is an A. It's a solid A for me. I love the original Ninja Turtles movie. And as time has gone on, I feel like the first three were some of my favorite th- things we got in Turtles. Yeah. I feel like it's gone pretty downhill. Uh, there's <laughs> yeah. still some fun ones. Uh, my kids saw Mutant Mayhem, Seth Rogen, Smuggler. Oh, yeah. My son, like, my son like bootleg recorded half of it on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, son, what are you doing? Let me watch that. You know? yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, man, like when I was a kid, there would be like a guy outside Vallarta and he would have like all the bootlegs ready. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Bro, and then you, when you put it in the thing, it's like you see like a video and people are walking oh, by. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't pirate anything. Um, <laughs> and, and I did take it back. Obviously, Turtles have done great things since then, but I just think the original first three were some of my favorite things we ever got from the Turtles. I would say yeah. A2, yeah. Okay, so A-A-S-S. So it's a little bit below. It's kind of where Happy Gilmore was. Yeah. I couldn't go above those two, I don't think. Well, Tombstone's at the top right now. Ready? Yeah, in your heart. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, that's man. Movie. That's a really good movie. Goodness. I'm going to go in S. I, I, it, it, to me, man, it hits me hard. Again, huge patriotism guy. Right, right. When I see what, you know, even reenactments of what people, I, I know when I wake up that I'm a lucky SOB to live in the United States of America. Dude, like, it's it's chilling to it, watch it this It hurts movie. to watch. Yeah, like, I've cried watching this when movie. When they're hurting and saying mommy and mama and yeah. I'm like, Dude, they're in, yeah. and they're in the trenches, and it's like they're pulling guys out, and it's like. Yeah. Oh, and what man. I want to tell people, and I this might Chills. even get some heat for this. This has nothing to do with movie. Like, you need to understand that that stuff happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever you think about this country or how you feel, if you're triggered by certain things or not, you need to shut the hell up, because this stuff happened. Yeah. You can bitch about this country because they did that. There's other <laughs> countries where you do that, and you will be gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll be gone tomorrow. Your social media will be off. So I am when I see movies like this, man, that's why when I'm it's, you know, the coolest thing that ever happened to me. We were at Baja Fish Taco about a month ago, maybe two months ago. My dad showed up before me. We we're meeting there. I showed up after him. My son showed up with my mom after when I left. This is gonna make me get teary eyed. The military guys told me that me my dad and my son separately all thank them for their service. 
And I was that's like, awesome. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I love seeing Look, those I'm guys. Look, I'm getting teary-eyed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love seeing those guys out there at the swap, too. It's like you just got to thank them for their service yeah. when they're yeah. going around, dude. Yeah. It's like they're still out here trooping, dude. Yeah. And then... Dude, I, I'm gonna say S. Better give the snaps. I have tears in my eyes, Tony. <laughs> Dude. F. <laughs> Yo, F. F. You. <laughs> Let's go to Ricky before Tony ruins yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's ass, dude. The, you're right. The vet, it's all about the veterans. It's just, it's so good. And I don't know. I, I you like, it's, it's, I literally cried a lot in this movie. Just because oh, of everything. Like, yeah. When Vin Diesel got shot, I was like, oh, he's, he's too Which Vin Diesel? Button. He's in it. What the heck? But like, I, I didn't dude, like, yeah, realize that until later. In but life. I love the sniper, dude. That sniper oh, yeah. made it for me oh, so good. I yeah, was like, I sniper. love this guy. I just want to be like this guy when, if I have to go to war. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally just trusting in God. Like, Boom, yep. like, they chose the perfect guy too. He yeah. was so good. And let me make this clear: it's not like war is a beautiful thing. No, it's oh, not. No. It's not. It's horrible. People, people die. It's horrible the things that people do. But there is there is reasons we're here and able to do what we're to do. Again, I can't change the past of how certain things happen. But yeah, yeah. Tony, I gotta say, a one oh. of my more favorite oh, war man, movies. I, we convinced <laughs> yeah. but I gotta say, Tom Hanks. Sorry, Austin. Austin's a huge Tom Hanks fan, but I'm not a big Tom Hanks fan. Okay. But yeah. he's a huge Tom Hanks. He's huge. Fan too. Are you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're huge. you're a big Tom Hanks fan. Okay. Big, big, big. I'm if. Yeah. Some, some yay, some nay. I would oh, say that I he's feel. played some of like the most iconic roles in history. Forrest Gump movies. for sure. Forrest Gump. Then you got uh, Woody's voice. Huh? Woody's voice. Woody's voice. And yeah. you also big. Got I Captain big. Phillips. Captain like, Phillips. Oh yeah, that was I a good like one. Turner and Hooch. A lot. Turner. But but if you're wondering why I was getting emotional, it just made me happy that my dad raised me right. That the lineage of our family. Without someone telling us to, yes. Like my dad, thank you for the service. I think, and my son with no. And, and thank you to all those veterans out there and the people who are serving. Absolutely, we appreciate it. Trust me, everybody yeah. in our group is like t- so thankful for you guys. Well, so. last one, and we'll go fast. Speaking Woo. of crying, S plus plus plus, top top three. When I said earlier that uh, I go between Jurassic Park and Braveheart, this is always my rotation. Yes, hundred so. percent S for me for sure. You don't like yeah, this movie? I love this movie. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> just stared at me like he was about to hurt my feelings. I was like, oh, no, no, no. it's an S. It's a, it's too good of a movie. Too yeah, good. Too Dude, good. I'm telling you, Home Alone's great. It's what? What's your rating? S. S. Oh, that's oh, our wow. first quadruple S. Let's and the only go. reason I'm saying that is because, bro, when he goes and gets electrocuted and all the talk. <laughs> That's like You're thinking of I'm Jurassic I'm... Park. What? <laughs> We're talking about Home Alone. Are you, I know. Ta- are you talking about Back to the Future? Huh? Where, where he's plugging the Dude, things back. <laughs> he literally gets electrocuted and he's like, you see a skeleton, he's like, oh, oh yeah. I thought you meant Colin McAllister. I didn't know you meant Mark and Harry. Oh my Bro, I thought you meant Kevin. I was like, that doesn't happen. I thought he meant Jurassic Park Dude. when the kid gets shocked. Okay. Yeah. Jurassic, and if, if we are ranking on Jurassic Park, it's a D for me. So uh, oh. people can hate all they want. Let's just anyway. say this now before we go on to the next one. So the top winner, surpriser, was Home Alone, Home Alone. followed up by Tombstone, and the bottom, I'm sorry, was Space Jam. Wow. Dang. But still at a C. It's not like it landed at an F. Right, right. Like like where, you know, the N64 belongs. Oh, I'm right. just kidding. Wow. <laughs> He's kidding. Wow. Right. <laughs> so... We're gonna go on our next one. All righty, we're gonna transition transition <laughs> into our next one. Yes. Well, guys, please don't yeah. cut that out. Uh, I'm cutting it out. I'm the editing now. Nope, we're you can't. Gonna, uh. I'm the editing now. <laughs> Dude, I I'm am the this. editing now. I'm just kidding. All right, we're gonna go on to our next one. Was YouTube better back in the day? Oh wow, oh, was YouTube better back then? What a question because. I feel like before we answer this, you have to look at the time capsule, the capsule of what YouTube was versus what it is now. I think we can talk about brands and sponsorships, right? Let's say you're talking about review channels and people who review products. When did the level of trust start to break when you know people are potentially getting paid for reviews or content creators knowing that they're shilling or selling out for certain items or products? But to me, the biggest thing, the biggest change I've seen from early YouTube to now YouTube is almost something that you can't put like a actual like note on. And that what I mean by that is like there is just something special about old day YouTube. I don't know if it's the the small frame and the videos, the low production or what it was. But I think something about old YouTube is anybody who was doing it was doing it because they loved to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Right now, if you ask high school kids, one of the most popular answers, I think maybe the most popular answer, what do you want to do for a living, is YouTuber. And that's be, and that's when you feel like, 
where's the passion and love going to be in that, right? People scroll through their phones. They see someone doing a dumb TikTok dance and go, ooh, that's cool. I, I want to do that for a career. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> let, me, let me break it to you now. Uh, anybody, sorry to break it to you. You get a million views <laughs> on a TikTok. Cool. Enjoy your payment of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, the creator fund is kind of Yeah, I hope those water. thumbs up brought up your uh, your ego because that's all you're going to get from it. So, But before I dive in more, well, I'm curious about your guys' thoughts if one of you guys wants to jump in. I don't know. I, I guess I'll digress to Ricky first. All right. I, I, I kind of liked old YouTube. It's not that I don't like like the new YouTube, but I like the fact that and like nobody, nobody could make it. Like It didn't even matter, and he's right. It was all about the passion, but you got these old school dudes that would talk for hours about stuff mm -hmm. they loved, and I'm like... This is cool. I mean, it wasn't like super entertaining, but it was like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It was like informative and it's like, you knew the guy loved it. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah, like the early day, uh, uh, John Lester. Yeah. Game Straight 81, early dude, day Metal Jesus, John Hancock. These guys, guys are just talking yeah. because they're like, dude, I have a lot to say about the Atari yeah. or a lot to say about the Vectrex. Let me just tell you. And of course, there was the pioneers who were, you know, came into the scene already knowing video, you know, the AVGNs and those guys making it that extra layer of entertainment, which is more for entertainment versus information. Maybe sometimes both infotainment. Yeah. As they say. Is that it? Yeah, that's the word. Some of my favorite videos are honestly the how to's, but the older ones, like the Oops. low production. Yeah. Dude, love There's it. a cut and dry. It's like, the fact that these guys spent the time to put that on an editing software or even have the time oh, yeah. to upload it, yep, you know what I mean? Yep. That's kind of like, I was like, dang, man, they're really doing it. There's a passion of love oh, yeah. behind something. And it's like anybody could do it back in the day, but it was like no one was, yep. right? And yep. if you were, you'd be like 10 plus years ago, you guys, you also had- um, <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> that just hit, bro, when you said that. 10 plus years, <laughs> like 10 10 plus plus years. years ago, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, think about like how much- like difference wise it was your retro liberty to now like the editing right it yeah was like your transitions were different Everything you had way more run time on it so yeah like, there's a lot more chill time yeah which yeah. can be good and therapeutic heck there's channels that still do that to this day who crush it homeschool picker shout out she does great she's pretty raw on footage yeah she crushes the numbers froggy flips too froggy flip oh froggy i love flips. i love watching yeah. froggy flips dude froggy flips <laughs> finds the craziest toys man yeah his name's Anthony, I believe, but like Froggy yeah. Flips is one the one that I could just watch. I'm like, dude, you don't even have to say a word. Just keep going. It's like, ASMR. <laughs> it's like, it's like collecting ASMR. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're just yeah. kind of going in raw dog. Speaking of raw dog, Tony, what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what were your thoughts Perfect. on YouTube? Or, or yeah. do you think YouTube is better now? You know, I, I haven't really gotten like deep into YouTube until maybe the last like two or three years. Well, you met us nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, basically. <laughs> no, but I, I very much listened to podcasts before YouTube and then now w with the work from home, it was easy just to have something in the background. So I don't think I can really s like have a good opinion on it, but I, I definitely kind of agree with your sentiment, um, Aaron, where it's like, you know, now it's like a lot of people are kind of putting out content just to just to put it out there you know whatever's the most hype thing you know they're trying to catch the wave money. and everything yeah money right money <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just like the the purism i guess back in the day and like even watching like older videos to curtis's point like five ten years ago those are like they're passionate about like how to fix the car or whatever else that is to really help oh, yeah. you out you know so it's interesting I, i've asked caleb this question and he's like by far and large youtube is better now but that's just how he thinks, you know, his mindset is that it's better now, there's more, you're getting more for your time, you're getting more happening. So I think it just depends on obviously the person, but I don't know, I don't, I don't know. And I tell this to people who weren't around, you know, watching the old YouTube, it's just something you can't recreate. It was a special time in YouTube. Now I know this is like something on brand with this. It was like, what about like the OG review uh, channels compared to like now where it could be a paid sponsorship? Do you trust it? That is a huge, <laughs> huge flaw or worry within that world. Like, like they're getting they're, paid to review and play their game early or even like... And don't even have to go to games. I mean, recently I bought another new camera and I was looking into them and, you know, I'm watching these reviews, some of them, and I'm like, hmm, they never said anything bad. And I'm like, maybe the camera's amazing and just goat level camera. Or maybe this guy's getting paid and can't say something bad, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where it gets really hard on YouTube, because if you're going to YouTube, you know, we go to it for like just like collecting fun stuff. But if you're buying stuff based on, you know, your product review or you're those channels, you know, Marquise Brownlee and and the other guy, I don't even know who does this kind of stuff, but buying a phone, 
you always got to question the sponsorship aspect of it. And I think that's what makes it a little difficult for some people to swallow is because at the end of the day, say I really do like a product, right? Say I get sponsored by this mic, sure. And I'm like, dude, it's a good mic. But the company also, at the end of the day, I can feel good about it going, dude, it really is a good mic. I promise the internet it's good. But at the end of the day, it's even better to me because there was nothing out of my pocket, right? It's even that much sweeter. Well, I always say it's like you're in bed with the company that's giving you the money. So you're not going to bash them. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. if you do, you're not getting that revenue uh, uh, again from them, right? They're not going to come back to you for it. Yeah, kind of like Gerard said in the last one. He said he burned his bridges with Raid. Mm. He's like, yeah, I burnt my bridges and now it is what it is. Like they're not coming back to me. You know, and I've told companies that I've worked with companies where, you know, they were hard to work with even. And I'm like, eh, don't come back to me ever again. But I already worked with them once. And now I'm like, man, I feel bad. Hopefully my audience doesn't think like, you know, it was like a one and done thing. Like, I don't trust this company or don't like this company. Mm-hmm. But yeah. True. I got another question. It would be, are there channels that have not changed and relatively are the same type of videos that are still around? I'd say Game Chasers. Game Chasers, that's true. I'd say they're one of those channels that if you watch them from beginning to end, they're just Billy and Jay being <laughs> freaking Billy and Jay. Bunch you of know, goofers, man. Bunch <laughs> of goofers. I'd say we've been the same too since the beginning. Yeah, we've yeah. changed as far as like style of production within the video. It's almost like saying like, you know, you watch four movies in a row and they hired a different editor each time. Like I'd say we've gone through that. Yeah. But we've always been just us being us, being stupid, being on the internet. I don't know if there's any channels you can think of of anybody who's... Oh, I can. Uh, I mean, to me, AVGN's kind of solid. To me, he's still solid. Like, he's still kind of in the same just yeah. reviews. Yeah. The same kind of thing. Um, Metal, no, Metal Jesus changed it up quite like a little bit, but he's, he's still kind of old. He's still he's good still old Metal good old, Jesus. Yeah, I, 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 I do love watching Metal Yeah, Jesus. he's still good old Metal Jesus. And oh, Gerard. Oh, Gerard, Johnny. The completion. Oh, happy console gamer. Mike, oh, the purest. Oh, I love To it. this day, that man sits on the floor, talks about video games, Barely edits to his amazingness. He doesn't need to do a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. And even his thumbnails. And most people at least compromise on that. He didn't he never changed a oh, yeah. dude, oh <laughs> look at my face. Like, you know, big O face. Like I'm um, oh look at this. He's just him sitting down with some <laughs> lightning bolts. I love that guy. These yeah. ones are not in the gaming sphere, but it would be that was epic. I don't know if you ever seen that one. Wait, oh yeah, Juan. Juan. Yeah, yeah, I know Juan. Dude, yeah. he does amazing stuff yeah. man he's like he, he's always been the guy to just give him and big dawes yeah big dawes tv <laughs> yep. dude i love those guys those guys are awesome dude i love videos of people giving man that's some of my favorite videos and then another one would be it's very low production but still has the kind of feel for production is uh beard meets food i think i've seen his thumbnails up here in my channel but i've never watched one them. of the fastest uk food eaters and I love like fastest that. growing or he can eat the fast. No, he eats one of like fastest. Like he's like on par with like those type of fast eating people like Joey well, Chestnut. Interesting. Joey Chestnut. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hot dog guy, right? Yeah, hot dog yeah. guy. I can literally. Why do we know Joey Chestnut's name? Dude, because he's like, <laughs> I mean, he's like one of the most American names, dude. He's literally the hot dog eating contest. Chestnut's a weird name. I don't really <laughs> think about it. <laughs> yeah, but that man is different. He's always won his hot dog eating contest. Is he in sh- like in shape or is he a big dude? I would say he's kind of like my shape. Yeah, he's not like fat okay. or by any he's means. Big bone. Yeah. But I mean, this so guy. So he looks like an American. <laughs> beard meets food. He's in relatively good shape. He's very. T- he's like your your build, but he can literally eat like okay. ten pounds of food. Wow. And I'm always amazed. He just sit there and eat, and I'm like, I just keep eating. You don't have to say anything else. I'm like, just keep eating, dog. Let me <laughs> like, watch. Yeah. yeah. So I would say like uh, like those guys have kind of stayed on par with what their channel brand has always been. Got it. You know what I mean? Kind of like you guys. Same thing. Now, I have one other thing that maybe this might be a little controversial. Who would you say was like the first retro gaming hunters? So that's hard. I have it here, but I mean, I want to Oh, really? You look. Yeah, yeah. So you might not have it on there. He has them. Let me see. (laughs) One of the original guys I know, no, one of the earliest I can trace back is a guy named Dinky Dana is one of the first that I know of, and he was very early on hunting. Hmm. I'm talking Even like- Even probably further than what I was The saying. phone looks very weird, but I remember discovering <laughs> that and being like, whoa, this guy's looking for video games. Like at a swap meet. And I mean, it was the crappiest footage <laughs> ever seen. But I think, if I'm correct, I think Retro Rick has tried to chase it, uh, trace it back as well, and I think he ended up at Dinky Dana also. Dang, Who did you have? I had it at Ooh. Retro Game Hunters just before. Then they were like maybe I the think, Retro Hunters. The yeah, their name is like Retro Game, like Retro Hunters. Yeah. Oh yeah, we know Retro Hunters. Oh yeah, we know them. 
Yeah, like, they on they've, a personal level. They go pretty far back. Yes. And then also, I wouldn't say the cartridge chasers, but I would say that definitely the retro hunters is what I had on. There, uh, it's a crazy. I think the retro hunters and the game chasers were the first to popularize it, where people were like, "Wow, this is cool entertainment." Otherwise, before that, it was just like kind of like very sub niche type of thing. But I think the popularization it came from them, and then we came into them. I'll give us credit; we popularized it as well pretty quickly. You know, when we were in the early days, us and the yep. chasers. Yeah, so we're old, Ricky. We are old. Dang. We started that in our twenties, bro. But you know what? Why do you have to say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Go, go ahead, Curtis. Everybody, Let say it. You with know them. what's not old? PriceCharting.com. I knew that was coming. So I just wanted to talk about a little bit more about price charting it and what they offer as a service. What's, what's the big hot thing they wanted this? Uh, oh, I'm gonna tell it. you right now. They want. They don't want. They oh. definitely provide a service where you can get a subscription for six dollars yeah. to be able to input your collection. But also, they have a service for stores to be able to help with business end business end of it which is another i think it's like forty dollars forty nine dollars per nut month per nut per <laughs> no wow no, no, the same rate chill as papa <laughs> yo. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yo so anyway what the the collector I'm subscription so <laughs> you're good dude this is what makes them great right so, anyway one of those things that they provide is um a profit report as as price changes and all that profit <laughs> profitable gain grading recommendations for your cards yeah. and your comics and another thing that at, on top of it which i want to say is what's coming later on this month is the app which probably is out by now though by the time I this goes think, out i'm gonna get take a long shot and say it's out which i mean honestly it'd be great because it once yes. it's it's gonna be accessible on your phone and be able to do all those other features we talked about previously i think the subscription model you said is important because they have a free right as well with yeah. very minimal like little ads here that pop in it's not like those bootleg phone games you buy and it's like every second. Oh yeah. But the subscription surface service. Sub sur if you take yourself serious in any way, even as a collector or a reseller, it, I think those subscription services are super worth it. So yeah, man. Yeah. Check out pricecharting.com and thank you again for everything for this. So Chris, hit me with one more question, bro. All right, let me go back to where He's I was. He's gonna take you back, back to, to your your past. Past. What? <laughs> Yo, what? Uh, I would say are are you a fan of like prank YouTube channels? I used to be, and then I was like, I feel like there's a lot of disrespect mm, in these. What, yeah. about you, what about you? I, I can't say I am. I just don't want to be on the end of being pranked, you know? So I feel for the people who are kind of getting, you know, the butt end of the stick, I guess you could say. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan. Ricky? There's a difference. There's some prankers, pranksters that I saw, like like this one dude that stole this old lady's dog. I was pissed. Yeah. More than it, like, How's that a prank? Like, like, so there's <laughs> the, these prank channels. They're like not even pranks anymore. Like they yeah. ran out of ideas. So they're rude. doing, yeah, yeah, they're just doing stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, I stopped watching them. I like, like, I like, like the dad, like pranks, like, like, yeah. you know, like, 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 oh, you're washing your face with a piece of potato. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. yeah my and favorite, like, like when people are walking by, you just get like fake crop, crop dusted. The ones that I can stand are again, go back to that was epic and big Dawes. It's like a prank, but with intention of a big reward. Like, yeah. oh, I stepped okay. on your laptop that you have from school that's $20, but I'm giving you a $4,000 iMac right now. Yeah, got cool. it. Okay, like, okay, that, okay fair. That fair. has a justification. Like, there is yeah. a level of, you know, obviously, well, hopefully they didn't have anything important on there, but you know what I mean. At least when there's a little bit of lenience towards the end of giving something in return. Now, as uh, people keep pretty much doing an adaptation of redoing the same content, do you think that YouTube will finally push originality first? As AI progresses, yes. Because AI is getting so prominent in so many ways that I think we're going to lose a lot of personality on YouTube, which I think is a very scary place to be because it displaces the whole reason it's called YouTube. Yeah. It's about you and your own personality, you know, you running a channel. Even if you ran a channel with all your buddies, they're all going to be a little different because it's you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think as AI keeps going, I think YouTube's going to push personality. I mean, you, I'm sure that's the con. You go to YouTube channels, yes, because you f they, they're filling what you want you know they want to see us find something but they wouldn't stick around if they didn't like to watch you do it hmm. right because there's a million different models of people doing that yeah i just yeah. feel like i mean youtube's coming such <laughs> such a machine that like they'll just kind of fall into a certain category where it's people are just redoing the same content over and over and over to the fact where it's like where is the real 
side of YouTube again. Yep. You know what I mean? Making content just to make content is a scary place to be. Yeah. And that's, that's huge in YouTube. It happens to a lot of people. But when you're making it just to make a video, it feels like you're making a video just to make a video. Now, on this last question, would you guys... And is this wrapping it up for the day? Yes. Yes, okay. Are there any YouTube channels that you miss that are just not ever going to create content again for? Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh. Think about Wait, this. Say that what? YouTube say that channels what? that are gone that you wish would still make videos. Oh, wow. Ricky? Uh, the original Smosh, but I heard they bought it back. Yes, they did. So buy it back. yeah, I used to enjoy Smosh. A lot. <laughs> they were fun back in the. They were fun back. That that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The back. I, the I wouldn't stuff. say that I ever ended up like not liking them or like hating them, but I just yeah. kind of fell out of what they did. I was like, eh, wasn't for me anymore. But but they're back now, Ricky. So technically, your answer is invalid. invalid. <laughs> yep. Think about it, Tony. You I'll got think. one. Here, here, here. Um, I miss those NES Pursuit boys. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Bring back retro technically, liberty. They're back, so it's invalid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had one, and this is a dark story. Talk about them ending on the darkest note ever. I'm not even going to say the channel name just because it's a very dark thing. There was this guy I used to watch on YouTube. I'm just not going to say his name. I'm just not going to do it. Um, used to love his videos. Great reviewer. Funny. Skits like AVGN. David Dobrik. No, no, no. <laughs> Long time ago. Oh. Had a crazy amount of videos. So fun. And I loved his videos. And he went missing. And I was like, man, he hasn't done videos in like eight years and I forgot about him completely. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I got to know what happened to this guy. Like, I'm curious. Like, I'd love to go back and watch his videos or this and that. I started Googling his name and I'm kind of seeing this, that jail, <laughs> but I'm looking and I go down the wor wormhole. He was a freaking child. Oh, no way. Jail for God. like years. And I, it's so weird because you get such an icky feeling knowing that you loved the content. Right. But that, that's sadly the case with a lot of things, right? You don't know, who these people are, even in these Hollywood movies. I watched one today. Ricky, what do you think about the movie Jeepers Creepers? The Jeepers Creepers? Yep. <sighs> I liked it. I mean, it was... It... What if I told you the director, I just found out today, has been in jail as a convicted child multiple times? I don't like it anymore. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard because it's the same type of situation where I was like, man, I love Jeepers Creepers. And I actually clicked on the video Say it like Jeepers Creepers it ruins allegation, it. and I was like, "Oh, I thought it was like a, a bio on Jeepers Creepers," mm -hmm. but it was talking about the the director, and he's out now and still producing movies and accepted in Hollywood. Even Francis Ford Coppola, one of the biggest names in you in YouTube in cinema, knew what he did, got him out of jail early, and sued the kid that pro that that told on him. What? Yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's this kind of crap that it, it make it's such a hard thing when you find this stuff out because you're like, man, it's so hard to put like so much. You're trying to divvy out like the content that you like, and then also the people behind. But it throws it, it away because yeah. now, no matter what, after today, I just know if I saw Jeepers Creepers, which we used to get a kick out of, I just know I couldn't watch it now. Mm -hmm. But the sad reality is, when you think about a lot of. Hollywood and creators and people are weirdos and freaks and yeah. psychos. It's yeah. scary yeah. to like know like how far do you go down the wormhole before you can't enjoy anything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, my my channel would be Super Best Friends Play. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that was just a relationship that ended in their own turmoil. But I mean like who was that again? It was three friends. I couldn't. I can't think of their name. I, I haven't seen their stuff in a long time. Does Game but... Grumps still do videos? Oh yeah, John and. Ego Raptor. I don't know if they still do videos. I don't know. Uh, but I just know, like, I remember the the relationship between those three, and I was like, man, that would be awesome to have that with like my friends. So, like, guys, don't cut me out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tony, you did so good. Curtis is out. <laughs> <laughs> More Bye. minorities. More <laughs> minorities. No, I'm just no. kidding. No, I'm just, yeah, well, just a heads up. Over. We do not bring in people based on any of that. <laughs> no. hey, but I somehow, was a, I was at a I was a minority hire over here. It looks like. <laughs> we need to fill a quota. We yeah, it's a quota. It's quota, Asian quota. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Ricky? You were about to say something. I was gonna say, since mine got taken out, what's what's the dude that did beautiful Wii Fit trainer? Young Town. Young Town, so good. So there was an artist called Young Town back in the day, and he still does videos, Ricky, but not about games. Oh, he would do video game raps, and they were good though. Oh. Like he wasn't just one of those guys that did them. Like he was good at what he did. Yeah. But he went away. And now he's back. But he does like just like straight up rap, which is great. Yeah. But there's something about when you're, you know, your your old homie left and they come back and it's not the same. 
Dude, you know? my kids love watch, listening to We, we Fit Trainer. Beautiful <laughs> We Fit Trainer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go. We're going to wrap this one up, and I want to say uh, all the audio links will be in the description of all the YouTube videos, and I just want to say thank you for all the support. Thank you to and, Tony. And thank you for Thanks Tony for being, being here, Beto in the back, as always. Beto. Thank you, Beto. And PriceCharting.com. Yes, price char- Tony, thanks for being here, bro. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for letting us like play around, too, and, and be cool. You know, you never know. You know, yeah. you know what he needs to say? What? Kick rocks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. nah. Rocks, Chris. You gotta say it, dude. I love you, Chris. Oh. <laughs> we love, we it's love good Chris, out here. Dude, Austin man. will be on next time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.